Good evening and welcome to the Minions of the Zoo. Despite appearances, I am not by myself. I'm just technically incompetent because I have a new version of OBS and everything has gone to crap. But I think we're going to be okay <laughs> with me tonight. And you don't have to disbelieve me. Uh, Dr. Functional. Hello. Serenity Star 13. Hello. Skeptok. Hi, everybody. And Sora Luna. Hello. <sighs> so, Sora, are, are you sad to be our northern neighbor? Do you guys just look down and look at all the political crap that's going on or is it just so bad up there that you you kind of figure we all look bad i am numb you're numb <laughs> everything yeah basically oh. yeah i get the extra uh, uh, layer of california gas stupid was uh two dollars a liter mm. right oh, now God. so maybe if it went down today but this week was two dollars a liter here and so i i let it burn. I don't care anymore. So nearest <laughs> makes no difference. Eight loonies per gallon. Mm. What is it? 3.8 liters per gallon, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Yuck. Yuck. So it's like, yeah, who cares? You guys have a funny little man uh, in power. We have a funny little man in power. Mm -hmm. Well, every city is exploding with stuff. Our cities have issues and stuff. That's good. It's all the same. <laughs> Whenever I yeah, see your PM figure itself out or it won't, you know. seated yeah. with his legs crossed, I just think that does not look comfortable. Oh, wait, he has no Gay balls. little socks. Hi, <laughs> Functional. Hi. We're not going to dive into the thing you wanted to talk about just yet, but I will, oh, no, I will come no, back no. to you. My week was kind of just, you know, I'm okay. Week's kind of boring aside from there's a bunch of entertainment stuff that happened that I'm really into whether it's positive or negative we'll get into later but uh yeah mm -hmm. you know, same old same old yeah same old same old well i mean you know health is good enough that you managed to show up so yeah that's 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 a winner i've uh spring has been uh kicking my ass a big big time i i sort of woke up on on uh, monday morning and uh i just felt like i had somebody with stiletto heels standing on my face. It was, you know, like with the point of the heels going like right below your eye socket. Oh, I and know. Not in the like. sexy way. You, not in the fun yeah. way either. <laughs> you have to what do you mean? It, what do you mean he's spring? In the middle, yeah, he's in the middle of California. To him, it is spring. Well, I mean, technically, it's also spring. It's not really? like my imagination. Astronomically yeah, speaking, it is actually spring. In the Northern Hemisphere, yeah, we call it the spring. Actually. No, in, um, in You California, wouldn't know it because... Funny enough, it was like tw a balmy, like perfect 20, 21 degrees. Mm -hmm. And then for the last three days, we now have like a foot and a half, two feet of snow on the fucking ground. And it's definitely not spring up here in the Northeast. <laughs> for those who do not know Celsius, that is 69 degrees. Fahrenheit. Which is a great, a fine temperature. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. You, that is a giggity temperature. Excellent. Um, like we, you know, it's it's not unheard of for this reason. Is that a temperature course, wet bulb? That kind, that kind of know, stuff happens know, all the uh, time. But uh, I love I love about the, the temperature scales. You know, Fahrenheit zero, it's pretty cold. Hundred, it's pretty hot. Uh, Kelvin zero, you're dead. Hundred, you're dead. You're dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a different kind no. of dead. <laughs> exactly. So you got really, really hot, or you got really, really cold. <laughs> exactly, you know, and and Celsius is cold and dead. Mm -hmm. Zero on hundred. I got into this discussion with some Brit bongs a couple years ago. I, what I did to, I mean, this is not an honest, uh, an honest way to argue, right? But what I did was I brought up a picture of Fahrenheit, the painting, and a picture of Celsius, the painting, and um, <laughs> Celsius looks really derpy. <laughs> It's just sort of like, ergo, I win. Yeah, yeah. The problem, here's the problem with Celsius. The degrees are too damn big. <laughs> you, you, you hit, you hit, uh, with, with, with Fahrenheit, there are so many degrees to, to point to, you know, you don't have to be very precise about the temperature. You have to be very precise with Celsius because those degrees me, mean twice as much, roughly. Hmm. Well, yeah, they're nine-fifths of a, uh, of a degree Fahrenheit. That's correct. Kind of the problem. Would so plus the scale plus or minus the scale correction. Y equals MX plus B, my friend. Um so yeah, the it uh really does. It does. Very good. Very good. Well, while we're talking while we're talking to you, how, how's it going? How's the garden? 
the, how's the, the, retirement. How's the how's the uh, the the eclipse mania? Are there people camped out in your front yard yet, looking actually, for a spot? I, 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 actually, everybody's getting ready for the uh, eclipse, me included. But the the garden is doing beautifully. I I can't believe how good the plants look this year. The weather's just been perfect for growing the garden. It really has. The mm. lawn looks good. The garden looks good. Everything is uh, coming up. We're going to have just a nice... Uh, I, it looks like we're going to get a decent crop of snow peas. I've wanted to grow snow peas for the longest time. We're, we're trying for three years running. We can't get... You know, we get these sad little <laughs> excuse plants. I'm your snow pea. Our <laughs> union said I had to show up here. So you make him sound like, want like Droopy, do. the cartoon character. Yeah. The little dog. I'm a snow pea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need to not ever do impressions. Um, it's really hard to do Droopy because you have to keep your mouth closed and talk. That's the way. That's the way the Droopy voice was was done. Anyway, like that guy who's the senator who looks like a turtle. He sounds kind of like Droopy. Yes, Mitch McConnell. <laughs> yeah, Mitch McConnell. Turtle man. <laughs> turtle man. Allegedly, cocaine Mitch. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. I don't know what you mean, <laughs> keeping my mouth shut. Hi, Serenity. Hi, Serenity. Hey, Serenity. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Anything you'd like are, to share with the class? Animals? How are your animals, Serenity? They're good. The coyotes seem to have been run for the f the mother fluffing hills. Because you anti so them good. into submission. Well, yeah. I anti oakleed some of them into submission. Um, it Girl. was, uh, ironically, this week when I was just flipping through YouTube shorts, there was apparently, and I felt so bad for this little girl, and it's the thing I keep trying to beat into people's heads, it's especially city people who don't understand coyotes, is mm. like, and this was a western coyote, which is a smaller version, because ours look like wolves over here. Mm -hmm. um, apparently in California, in the last like three or four months, a coyote ran up to a little kid that was outside of her, outside of, standing outside of her parents' car. Which yeah, I saw that video. <laughs> and tried to grab her, and it was just that thing of like, I, I don't, it's very hard because you have these animal idiots who are like, coyotes won't hurt you. It's fine. And it's like, no, they will kill you. They do not fucking care. But we can yeah, make we another, we can make another, little, we can make another little girl. Coyotes are precious. We can't make another, you can't make another coyote. You can make another little girl. Why not let the coyotes have their prey? <laughs> and then on top of that, my cousin who's, li who's a little cousin, he's only ever grown up in San Diego. He, he and his came with my his father, who's my other cousin, obviously, and it was the first time he's ever actually seen actual big coyotes. And he's mm -hmm. like, "Oh, that's the reason why you all that's the reason why you always yell at me." I was like, "I yell at you because coyotes are not something you f with." It's like mm -hmm. I'm not kidding. I don't care if they're California, just barely bigger than a jackal, or if they're East Coast. Like I think they have red wolf in them. Coyotes, you don't mess with them; they will kill you. So just remember, people see a coyote if it's acting cute don't fucking do anything with it because every idiot on the internet i've seen do that and i'm like i'm gonna punch one of you i'm gonna kill you i'm gonna kill you i'm gonna kill you hard at least they're not trying to take <laughs> selfies with the coyote <laughs> oh there was i remember this was months ago there was a stupid fool who was walking their tiny little like their crusty white dog they were walking their dang um their dog and they videoed the coyote following them and they're like, oh, it's just following me. I'm like, oh, my God, you yeah, stupid mother I've been effort. there. It's yeah. the, your, your response should be, come on, let's get home now. Not, oh, <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> they're was, getting, they, they, they've gotten pretty brazen, too, because we had oh, an yeah. attack uh, up in Alberta. It was just at the trans, one of the rest stops along Trans Canada. And Coyote, you know, busy rest stop, like relatively busy. Obviously, it's Trans Canada, so it's not like. You know, yeah. a, a major inner inner city highway, um, but busy enough that there's a lot of commotion, trucks and stuff. But if they're ballsy enough that they'll walk right into the rest stop. And one, luckily, the girl oh, was yeah. eleven or twelve, so she was bigger. But uh, that's one of those Western coyotes too, which are oh, yep. much bigger than yep. this. This is the one yeah, from the L.A. Video. that you were talking about, or um, oh yeah, Summerside Hills. Yep, Woodland Hills. Thank you. It, and it's it's not a cheap neighborhood, but. 
Like, people are like, the mother's just screaming. It's like, they had another kid, you assholes. What is she supposed to do? Drop the baby to go get the well, other girl? That's not a very yeah, big coyote. Nobody knew it at the time. No, it's not. You, so everybody yeah. can see oh, this, no. right? Yes. Yeah. Or okay. We can. Let's go back. Well, hopefully everybody else can. can. I think I'm being oh, confident. Yeah. So the uh, coyote yeah. looked at the little girl and said, oh, you're friend-shaped, and then just went over yeah. and decided to it try to well, drag and her. And, and then grabs her and scares it away. <laughs> And the thing is, is like that, like I said, Western coyotes are smaller by about almost a half size compared to East Coast coyotes. So mine is about two. The one I had, the two I had to kill were about two times that size. Yeah. And looked more like yeah. wolves. <laughs> this is not a contest we want to win, by the way. Oh, the, 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 yeah. Your coyote, your These coyotes are twice, twice the size. Yeah. They're almost. It's it's one of those they're it feels much, like wow. it a lot. <laughs> East Coast they're, they're are terrifying. They're much closer to wolves. Like we yeah. again, they they become so brazen, they'll come into Toronto. Yeah. Uh, along we, we have a we have a really good green system of of of, of uh, ravines that go north south. So they'll come up from the northern brush. You've got, you've got greenways. Yeah. Greenways, yeah. yeah. And they'll come right into the heart of the city following these greenways right. and they'll they'll snatch small medium-sized dogs easy. Easy. Yeah. Grab them, snap their neck, run away. Owners screaming bloody murder, but uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. it's not like we have the right to defend and, ourselves, do we? And the thing is, is like at least around here, like we, there's other animals to worry about. Like we have bobcats, we mm. have lynx, we have foxes, we have black bears. The coyotes are more assholes than anything. Most black bears, for the most part, will leave you alone. Um, bobcats and lynx, they're once again, they'll mostly leave you alone. Mountain lions, unless you really, unless they're really starving or really sick, they'll leave you alone. Mm -hmm. um, it's coyotes and feral dogs. Those are, and feral pigs. Those are the big three around here. Like we have the right to kill coyotes and feral pigs around here. Yeah, because um, they don't give a fuck. Oh yeah, they don't. And like um, we've had issues in the past with the feral pigs, and it's and sure, feral pigs truly do not give a shit. Oh yeah, and the thing like, and it's it's very hard. To, they're no, I, I don't agree with the American dingoes thing, Assassin, because dingoes are not as scary as coyotes are. At least not the well, East Coast. A dingo, coyotes. my baby. But it's 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 but it's comparable. But it's like yeah. yeah, no, it's we don't have. We've seen black bears running around, but they have enough sense to not try anything. Um, yeah, they're not confrontational. Not, yeah, I've literally because we have lights on the road on the road as it comes down to my house. And I have literally just watched a coyote just stare at the house and the cats on the front porch mm. and just walk. And I'm just like, try it. <laughs> please. please <laughs> she chambers around. Try it. <laughs> you you know, the, the, coyote, the coyotes out here, and we have a ton of them. We get Texas mm -hmm. famously has coyotes. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they're so smart. And they oh, yeah. really are a smart animal. They're, they know where to go and where not to go. And they're, mm -hmm. they're, it's pretty rare that uh, we we see them, even though the coyote census is, is increasing in Texas. Uh, they what? they are really good at avoiding people down here. Well, I was talking mm -hmm. to the forest rangers around here, because, of course, there's forest rangers around here, because welcome to my hell. Um, and they were saying that, because we were getting, we weren't flooding, but we were getting a lot of really bad rain. And because mm -hmm. of all the rain, it was basically making things either, if they went to ground, they drowned and the bodies got swept away. Or it was making other stuff hide or hide on people's farms. So that's the reason why the coyotes got more brazen during that time is mm -hmm. because they were trying to get to the stuff on the farm. Because either it was the farm animals that they were trying to get because they were easier targets. Or they were trying to get to the wild things that were hiding on the farms. Um, I've... I, uh, yeah, so it's it's been fun. <laughs> it, it does sound like fun, but we are we're twenty three minutes in, and, uh, and we're talking no, no, about coyotes. No, no, it's fine. It's just, but there's something. And how, little, there's a little bit of housekeeping that we need to do. We yeah, need, we need to do, which is Skep. Would you be our official greeter tonight to the people uh, in chat? Absolutely, I shall. Send Thank you. Yeah, go over and say hello to everybody who we got in in chat this evening. We have uh, uh, going back up. Raymond Lewis is here. Nice, nice to see you. And uh, Spittlebuggy's here. Ah, Jack, how, how you doing, bud? Uh, let's see who else has uh, hung around. We we post a lot to chat, so there's a lot to go through uh, here. Hi, Mash. How you doing? Good to see you. Uh, nice, nice to have uh, Mash stop by. And, uh, Cardboard archives. 
card board archives is here. Cannibalistic Wizard is here also. And uh, anybody I have uh, forgotten, please sing out. Oh, there's Gulf City Peterbilt Confederacy 379. The person with the <laughs> longest Welcome. name of anybody in <laughs> any of our chats. <laughs> uh, Hi, Quippers. Yes. Uh, Gulf, C Gulf City's always welcome here. Thank you, All sir. Right. We hail the whale in these parts. We sure as hell do. So we have some entertainment stuff <clears throat> that we're going to talk about a little later. But while we're on the subject of asshole animals, let me... Uh... Yeah, do it. <laughs> okay, whale versus shark. A biologist breaks down the battle that has captivated the world. Um, there are two articles about orcas. And the thing about orcas is you can look at different communities of orcas. There are the ones that just sort of like live off the coast. And that's one community. Then there's the transient ones that pass through. <clears throat> and then there's the ones that Brandy sort of waves. live off in the uh, the deep waters. And you get different hunting behaviors from each one of these damn things. Uh, that's how freaking smart and adaptable stupid orcas are. They, um, the ones that generally just sort of hang out and don't move around too much, they'll just eat salmon like up around, uh, you know, Sora's way, right? They'll just go there. Come in the inlet. Yeah. Sometimes. They'll just hang out, eat some salmon. Everything's kind of cool. The transient ones are assholes. They will they will use the ocean topography along the floor, and they hunt in groups where they all, like, follow the terrain of the, the sea canyons, and then they bop up all at the same time, take a breath, and go back down. They're, like, in formation looking yeah. for marine mammals to slaughter. <laughs> They are, they are, they are just mur and they are murderous. They are absolutely murderous. Well, so, those, those, those same groups will like, they'll, they'll, they'll fan out and they'll corral a lot of the other transient sea life into a specific area and they'll yeah. circle them and just, oh, well, it's, yes, it's when incredible they can, to watch when they came up, yeah, when they, when can. they can, the thing is that they're different orcas in different with different behavior patterns and in different locations all have adapted to different methods of hunting that's how smart they very are very intelligent yeah. they are very freaking intelligent so there's one uh asshole uh, uh killer whale named starbird he was targeted he targeted a juvenile great white shark managing to incapacitate and consume its liver in under two minutes this display of efficiency and, and nice skill yonky highlights an unprecedented level of individual hunting capability. So they normally hunt as packs, but in this particular one, Starbird basically told his buddy who hangs out with him all the time, I got this. Watch this. Watch yeah. this. Let's just show you what I can do all by right. myself. Right. <laughs> Great white shark, two minutes. Hold my beer. Hold, hold my beer. Holy wow. crap. They need um, to rename Starburst to Bill. <laughs> And, uh, you know, then there's another article that came out at the same time, how crafty orca whales hunt near submarine canyons. And that's the, the thing I was talking about with them following the terrain and then yeah. all surfacing at once. The, the deep water ones, um, because they don't really have terrain to work with or things you can sort of corral your prey into, <clears throat> have to have some different techniques. So they, they particularly like to do the, uh, you know, oh, yeah, I got let's, it. Launch, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's launch the other thing into the air. So it's like, this is a thing that the deep water the ones love to do, where they just go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's so see that again. Oh. Boop. I believe I can... <laughs> What's oh, like, it's, it's like, so bad. It's like it's those, so funny. It's, those videos of, like, sea lions oh. seeing a boat and being like, boat! And getting <laughs> on the boat real quick. Because <laughs> there's a whale nearby, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I... <laughs> I like to joke about the ocean because it just amuses me. But sea lions really are just like, I'm sorry, sea lions. Uh, killer whales are just this apex predator. And they okay. are scary smart. Um, and obviously feral pigs are going to be really smart too. And mean. But, uh, man, I don't want to swim in the ocean anymore. There's no. still so much we don't know about them, which is incredible when, we, when we're getting all this new... Uh, sort of uh, theories and, and watching their behavior with new uh, undersea cameras and stuff. Yeah. I watched some of it the other week. It was fascinating. Well, this is actually well, a pretty I... interesting article because they break down uh, behaviors of different groups. I'm going to put the link in the chat. We oh, do not I, have I, time to go through all of this. I Sorry, go ahead. the fact that, like, especially the, the, you can always tell the city-born, well, most people who are vegans are city-born, 
But you can always tell the city-born ones because they're like, animals aren't as cruel as humans. And I'm like, motherfucker, what? <laughs> I have seen chickens fall upon a, a mouse that's fallen from the rafters of the chicken coop like raptors. Do not start mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chickens are assholes. Well, cue the video they're, of they're... larger larger primates walking up to those tiny monkeys and just popping their just heads like grapes. Them. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. And it's like or like um lions that'll just walk up to like a cheetah cub and just kill it and yeah. not even eat it, just leave it. It's like do not and then when the certain when the R word was starting, people found out otters like R worded other animals and stuff like this. It's like I don't like yeah like human beings are not like we're murderous but we're we're not <laughs> as bad as mother it's nature is It's almost as guys. if we evolved with morality and consciousness and society <laughs> yeah. and Hashtag not and... all. <laughs> yeah, really. Yes. Yeah. In California. <laughs> um but it's it's just that thing it's always funny whenever you hear vegans talk. Animals are so sweet. I'm like tell me you've never left New York City without telling me you've never left New York City. Or yeah. actually dealt with a rat. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there's really no there's really no segue for this, but we kind of got to get it out of the way. Uh, Scap, are you familiar with what's been going on with this merger with Truth Social? Uh, no, in fact, in fact, I just I just found out about that. I did not know that. Uh, uh, what is this? He has a does he have a buyout or is, is, is this a merger that he's putting together and, and who's, who's in it? I have not seen this. At okay. All. Essentially what happened is Trump's got a little cash flow problem, which we, <laughs> we haven't <laughs> yeah. really discussed, but he has a little cash flow problem yeah. and uh, he's essentially merging with, I believe a publicly traded company. And that essentially makes truth social, a publicly traded company. Right. And so rather than having to go out and do an IPO and do all this sort of stuff, I believe that's that's the uh, the gist of it. Is that going to inject a whole bunch of real value into Truth Social? Yeah. Uh, what, it depends how they structure that. Are they going to combine a, the capital account? If it does, it's going to make him look like he has a huge asset. Oh, well, it's, the digi good it's Digital World Acquisition Corp. Holy crap. I'm sorry, what? Is the one the mergers between Digital World Acquisition Corp? Yeah, well, what this does is it uh, it gives Trump uh, a, another potential way to actually uh, get that bond or just pay it. You know, it, yeah. it, it gives him right. He, he had right. a nice That's little windfall like a few days before he has to deal with this uh, ridiculous thing that's happening in New York. Um. So maybe he's going to come out on top with this deal, or maybe he can use this to secure the loan. Or maybe he can, you know, say, here, hold my stock, you know, and use that as uh, collateral that's, for the thing. There's a lot of things that could what, happen. That's what I think is going on here is he's pumping up a capital account to be his bail, yep. to be his bond. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's uh, quite the maneuver. I didn't see this one coming. No, I didn't. That's, uh, I see how you could do it. He's got, I mean, somebody's got to really like you. <laughs> to put this kind of structure, this kind of a deal. There is no way. What is Truth Social going to be worth at the end of the deal? Does it say uh, 3.5 billion. <laughs> the plot sickens. Okay. I see. Um, Trump will be the majority shareholder and the sh yeah. large standing shareholders this will not be able to sell to for six months. Into a billionaire on paper. Basically. Yeah. So um, Cardboard Archive says, I believe Trump is going to get about $2 billion from the merger. Yeah, sounds about right. He's not going to get a cash flow problem. He's got, he's not got a cash flow problem. He's got money and property, not cash on hand. Well, I think that is what I mean by a cash flow problem. Yeah, that, that's he what hasn't, mean. okay, he has a li liquidity problem. Liquidity, liquidity yeah. that, which is the case for most billionaires. Most billionaires don't have liquidity. Liquidity, because that's stupid. But most courts will work with you and let you sign assets over. Yes, they you will. You pledge assets. Well, these, we're clearly not talking about most courts in this case. Yeah, yeah. true. That's also true. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Huh. Funny how that, that whole hearing didn't have a jury or anything else. It was just. Uh, never oh, mind. This is, the, this, this is the most kangaroo court you, you've ever seen. This is this is pure political moves against a political actor. I'm not saying he's good or bad. Or, you know, but I, I'm saying that this is, I think, a misuse of these statutes at at best. Yep. I, show me the man, I'll a, show you the crime. Right, exactly. If, yeah. if I was a New Yorker, I'd be even more pissed. It's like, why Round are you wasting money on this? 
Why? Well, if you could yep, shake off right. the brainwashing. Back it's not as easy as that movie where you just put on the glasses and suddenly you see through all the propaganda. <laughs> I wish yeah. it was yeah, that easy. <laughs> I know, but it's still, it's like, it's one of those things when you think about how much money it takes to go after somebody, anybody, let alone someone like Trump. It's like, we, we have other shit to deal with right now, and this is not going to do anything. This is not going to stop him from running. This is not going to. So why? What does this do? Letitia James uh, thinks she is going to be a, a governor in the future. That's what oh, I'm thinking absolutely. it is. She absolutely. is running for governor and she's running hard. <laughs> she oh, wants to be. Yeah. She wants to be what Newsom is going to try to do, which she wants to be a governor for a few years, air quotes, prove herself and then be president. And then be president. That's exactly it's, right. It's, it's, That's exactly it's, it's right. backfiring so spectacularly oh, yeah. in all of their faces, not just um um Angeron and and Letitia's uh but also in the the to the, the the outside view you know for the the middle of the road the un, the generally undecided voter the, the, the you know swing voters what have you you know people who aren't like tied to a specific party um it's really pushing them to the to to Trump's side because they're making him out to be this 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 modern martyr this modern pariah that people are going even people who are politically agnostic, who just want to do business, who just what? want to, you know, engage in capitalism in the Western world are going, what the? They just I, want to I'm not doing business in New York if this is going through. Like, a lot what? of people are getting scared. You have people, sure, people like uh, O'Leary and, and some of the other uh, uh, investors, you know, might skew one way or the other. Typically, a lot of them, really don't care too much about the politics as long as they can engage in their 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 different fields of capitalism which is fine like they want mm, to yeah. although know, kevin kevin o'leary is a very political guy yeah he is, yeah. He is. well they want a favorable um, political climate for business is what yes. they want at a minimum and <laughs> sure and, yeah and like and the issue is is that it's it's like watching 2016 all over again. Everybody keeps talking about 2020. Yeah, I don't yeah, care about really this. Is. this is like watching 2016 again. It's like if you mother effers would just ignore him, he would go away. <laughs> but well, you won't not go away. Do it. But they'd have they'd have a chance, I think, mm -hmm. against <laughs> you know you know dueling narratives. I, I don't think that that he, he would just go away. Of course not. But well, yeah, well you, you know, know what I mean though. It, I know he exactly would lose. what you mean. Yeah. He would lose momentum stuff. It's like, this is 2016 all over again. If Hillary had just, not that I like Hillary, but if she had just ignored him, it'd just been like, sure, Trump, whatever, baby, sure. Like, this, none of the crap would have happened. It's like, you all are pushing the buttons of a provocateur. This man knows what he, like, the, he, him and his team know what they're doing when you do this stuff. You are not pushing the buttons of... A DeSantis who will crumble the minute you start pressing his buttons. It's not like stop, stop thinking him like he was a politician. Stop think he is a provocateur. He is a showman. Stop it. The only way you stop a showman is you take away their spotlight, and the only way you do that is by ignoring them, or at the very least, not giving them that much attention. It's just oy. so serenity. <gasps> there's a there's an article that was in uh, <coughs> okay NBC News of all things. Oh, Attorney boy. General Merrick Garland says it would have been absurd to block special counsel's language on Biden's memory. <laughs> so essentially, the Justice Department is getting shit for that report saying, you know, well, about the, the documents, you know, the documents yeah. that were stored in Joe's garage that uh -huh. like, well, why did you say those nasty things about our fantastic president, Brandon, um, in your report? How did you why didn't you stop him from saying those things? And it's like, well, <laughs> what? The question is, what would you put in its place? Yeah. We're, we're criticizing the Justice Department when they actually managed to get around to doing their job. We're, we're criticizing yeah. them for filing the report that they're required to file. Um, this just seems this just seems like we're just trying to go around and make sure anybody who points out that the emperor is not wearing any clothes, we're just going to start coming down on them. Let's just pressure the Justice Department to pick their words more carefully next time they uh, out uh, Brandon as being mentally uh, in decline. Mm. Well, it, it's just, it's one of those things where it's kind of like, eh, we all know he's not making the decisions. <laughs> Everybody knows he ain't making the decisions. Yeah. Anybody who says he's making the decisions <clears throat> is an idiot. Yeah. In his but report, Herr described Biden's memory as significantly limited <laughs> during interviews with the special counsel's office last year, as well as with a ghostwriter who worked on Biden's memoirs. Um, 
When the president announced my nomination, he said to me directly and then to the American public that he intended to restore the independence and the integrity of the Justice Department and that he wanted me to serve as the lawyer for the American people, not the lawyer for the president. <laughs> Man, I don't know how you can spit out those words without your nose growing. Yeah. That's astonishing. Well, anyway, this was just a little aside. Sorry, I didn't mean to step on you there, Functional. What were you going to say? I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> well, you're in mental decline, but I won't point it out because that would be rude. <laughs> it's nice of you to not point that out. Yeah, this is me not pointing it out. So one more Trump thing, and then we're we're done with uh, Trumpy stuff. Okay. Um, <clears throat> remember all the heat that Trump got. I think there's, you know, it's part of the legal actions when he was calling up people looking for votes, right? Saying, mm. are you sure there aren't some votes laying around? Do we have like an accurate count? That sort of thing. It's bad when Trump does it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Newsom launches <laughs> rescue mission for rejected Prop 1 ballots. Uh, so <laughs> Prop 1 did pass by a very narrow margin. And essentially it raises $6 billion to house the homeless and give them mental health and oh, yada, boy. yada, yada. It's just another $6 billion that we don't All have. All coming out of your pocket. All coming out of my pocket and specifically. Uh, so the ballot initiative is so close that with your commitment to volunteer could mean the difference between people getting off the streets and into the treatment they need or not, the governor's email read. So essentially he went out and contacted anybody who had their ballot uh, refused for any reason and said, hey, you know, let's just get that vote counted. You know, we, you can just sign it after the fact. It'll, it'll be fine. Now, I don't know about the mechanics of whether this is legal or not, not pretending to be an expert in voting law, but the tone of this seems to be pretty much identical to the phone call Trump made to Georgia uh, around the 2020 election, at least to my mind. Maybe I just don't understand. But it's totally fine when Gavin Newsom does it because it's to help the homeless and stuff, but Trump is evil and I, mean, I don't even want well, to defend it, Trump. I don't even want to be in this position I, of defending I, him. I, I think motivation does matter. And yeah. Gavin Newsom is trying to help yeah. good people and help good things to happen. Whereas Trump is helping bad things to happen because he is a, a bad person. As you know, he's trying to find votes. I mean, that's yes. all he's trying to do. That's all Trump was right. doing in those phone calls. Yeah. And it's bad. So that's bad when he does it because we don't want Trump to get votes. Right. Any right thinking person. It's probably the Constitution that Trump shouldn't get votes. In fact, let's just say it is. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah that's fine. OK, well, I've done my uh, done my duty and we've gone through that thing here. Let's see. Uh, in a previous show, because I always like to do follow ups, we were talking about the lead that somebody supposedly detected in a Stanley Cup, one of those thermos things. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. Well, it turns out if you do a CT scan, it'll tell you exactly where the lead is located. And yeah. it's right where it's supposed to be. See, Which is what I said. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but it's reached the point where somebody said, fine, we'll just do a CT scan. <laughs> Here's the drinky part. And then outside of the drinky part, that red bit is where the lead is that, you know. Yeah. That's a, that's it shouldn't be necessary to do this. But, you know, even this probably won't convince some people. Well, it's the thing of like, th that's how you know. It's, it's. MLMers mostly who do that and almond moms. It's like you you know And what moms? Almond Almond moms. Almond moms. They're oh, they're also called crunchy moms. They're the moms who are like, oh my god, you can't have high cut fruit tourist cut syrup. It's the end of the world. Oh no. Oh, okay. Those people I, I would no almond I would moms. just think there's I a distinction, that. Serenity. I, I would yeah. say crunchy mom is the you can't have, you know, chemtrails yeah. exist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Granola, et cetera. <laughs> almond moms are the ones where oh you don't need to have a snack here have an almond they're the ones who uh, give yeah. their kids uh, eating disorders right but yeah no they really are orthorexia as it's called but anyway but it's one of those things like the minute they started scratching the bottom i was like someone told you to scratch the bottom that, that to where, that's where to find it because logic would dictate if you're looking for lead and you think it's poisoning people you go for the inside of the tumbler not the outside bottom of the tumbler so this was a yeah. whole thing of just them trying to, like, push their stupid crap. Uh, get a glass one or a copper one that we sell because this yeah. is what we're doing. Look at it's us, that, look it's at those, us. Yeah, it's those people. And it's like, I want to backhand you into next week. I say this <laughs> as someone who doesn't own a Stanley. I own all of the off-brands, including the Walmart brand, because I'm not paying that much money. 
but it makes me mad yeah. when people pull that crap. Now, these are to compete with, like, a Yeti. Is that the... Stanley and Yeti have been around for not the exact same amount of time, but they've been around for a good bit. Yeti mm. was the one from about five or six years ago. Yeah. Everybody talked about it. And then Stanley is a new one because Stanley comes in a lot of mother effing colors. Um, mm. Yeah. There's... This shows you how much I'm on the internet. Um, there's speculation that the next big brand when it comes to these kind of, like, tumblers and thermoses that are insulated is Awala. Um, because Awala oh, yeah. comes in a bunch of different colors. Mm, um, pretty colors. I, I think they're really pretty, but and they're a little bit cheaper than Stanley, but if they get popular, they're going to be just as much as Stanley because Awala's not stupid. There's, um, there was another brand that... I, oh, it's somewhere in my cupboard. Slim Modern? They, they do too. they do the insulated stuff too, but I like it for their kids' lines because the kids' lines have all sorts of patterns. Like yeah. we have a tiny little one that has like ladybugs. Mm -hmm. Um and then I have one that has dog prints and the reason I got it is it has a bull terrier on it. Yeah. So <laughs> and, like then the, those, I, and, and those are like a third of the price, but they yeah. are the same thing. If you put them, you know, twenty four hours cold 12 hours hot you know it's the same thing i i i like the cork sickle brand but yeah like there's a whole bunch of different ones that all kind of do the same thing and it's it's just it's i don't mind staying hydrated drink your water people please drink water but it's just it's one of those things where it's kind of like it don't, turned into don't weird, join a cult to drink your yeah. water <laughs> it's like it turned into a weird status symbol and it's mm. just like you can't you can't sit here and tell me about stanley if you talk about getting a Stanley and going to a Taylor Swift concert more than once, mm -hmm. do not complain to me about go about money. Do not, because you uh, have too much too much expendable income. And shut the hell up. Do you remember the? So this is just the next like like. I'm so sorry, Utah. It's it's just the next Mormon <laughs> mom cult. Yeah. The one before this was is it something like Ray Dunn? Those yes, weird. Yes, Ray Dunn. Yes. With those weird crockery stuff with yep. the odd font that people <laughs> used to do the same thing like they went to target for stanley's they would like like hunt down uh uh home goods oh yeah people and like attack them while they were putting ray dunn crap out on the floor there's so many of those little things where like a brand becomes trendy and some of them stand the test of time and others don't mm -hmm. Ray like, Dunn's not one of them. Like I have, I have like a Fiesta Wear creamer oh, yeah, and sugar bowl, which I like That's using. Made in my home state. You know, I like Fiesta yeah. Wear. I like Blanco too. I mean, there's there's some brands that hold up, but I don't know if um, <sighs> the question is in 20 years will these things still have value or not? No. Stanley Stanley's been around for a very long time and it's very old, so they'll they'll ride this out. Um, it's the smaller brands that kind of like Ray Dunn. Like I have no idea if the, if I think that company actually went under. I think, but it's just it's. <laughs> I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised. But, it. but like Stanley's existed long before this, and they'll survive long after. Well, they this, were, is, they were, this is Stanley Tools, right? It's the same yeah. com same company. My 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 uh, great grandfather who worked on yeah. CSX, he he had a uh, old Stanley lunchbox. Except that was made in the U.S. and these things are not. Probably um, not. No, well, I mean, they're, they're not. Them. I've checked. I, I, I went out of my way to find, like, a thermos that was not made in China. And the only thing I could find was Zojirushi, which I think mm -hmm. is made in Thailand. Yeah, and I some of their not. stuff is made in Japan. But it's almost impossible, almost impossible to find a vacuum bottle of any kind, you know, for, like, food or drink that isn't made in China. So mm -hmm. that's their plan. Yeah, that's they're their plan. The, the thermos yeah. model. <laughs> strategy to take over the world. I'm one of the most contrary people, you know. My phone was made in Japan. My thermos was made in Thailand. I have less stuff made in China than most people. And, but even so, you know, the computer that's running OBS improperly oh, right now is made in China. Where do you think that computer was? Made? Oh, I know where it was made. But if I could, I would buy it from the Chats Chatsworth um, one that makes the U.S. computers, and I wouldn't yeah. even mind paying an extra ten percent for it. But that's not an option because I'm not the U.S. government, so. So there. Well, it, it's one of those things where it's kind of like, it's the whole fact of like being living clean, air quotes, or like being better for the environment, or even like do what you can and don't and do the best yeah. you can. Like I try not to buy from China, but I live in West Virginia. Good fucking luck. Um, it's it's not easy. 
It's but, not easy, and I try my best, but I it, but that's all you can do sometimes. Well, let's West, do West Virginia, China is here for you. Well, let's do a little more, it's a few more things work. before we get into sort of the uh, entertainment <laughs> block. Mm -hmm. uh, so. I don't know if I've mentioned CISA, which is basically the big security intelligence outfit. It's a cybersecurity and infrastructure. Ah, I can't talk. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA. About a month ago, <laughs> some of their systems got hacked. <laughs> so the, the of people, they did. the people that <laughs> that's just perfect. that handle <laughs> the cybersecurity <laughs> warnings got hacked. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're good at this. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, we got sociology. Had to take their degree, systems okay. offline. Everything's everything's everything is fine. Everything uh, is fine. So I also mentioned what's early. What's their DEI score? <laughs> yeah, I. Yeah, let's get um, the important part. <laughs> so I also let's mentioned uh, previously that there was this missive from the White House <laughs> where they were saying, oh. You shouldn't use languages like uh, C or C++. You should only use languages that put training wheels on all your memory allocations because that'll yeah. keep the hackers from getting in. Yeah, right. Well, right. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. There, there won't be any exploitable. So the guy who basically invented C++, very prominent programming language, uh, has a plan for how to bring safety and security to C++. We are not going to go into said plan. What we're going to do is instead just sort of look at this picture and I saw this picture uh, of him standing up there, you know, talking about this. I think he's 72. He's, you know, roughly Skep's age. But he's like, no, no, still got shit going on. We're going to fix this. Uh, and and he's, he's attacking the White House's claims. But I got very distracted by that podium that they had there because having seen Aqua Teen Hunger Force... I'm like, why is he standing next to Master Shake? Is it just me? I don't know. It is, it is Master Shake. It. Yeah, I you're right. It. it is. It. it is. It is. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it sure is. what the nope. hell kind of is that? Now, now I can't see anything else. Now you can't see anything else. <laughs> Bad, Harry. Bad. <laughs> okay. Well, Frylock? He, the guy's racist. Uh, yeah. What? what the fuck is going on? That's actually pretty good. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, that's good. Okay, let's see. We talked about fish. Uh, we we're going to talk about the eclipse briefly. Um, so people are losing their freaking minds about this stupid eclipse. They're trying to sixth grade science camp all these poor kids. Uh, Texas officials warn schools to close ahead of solar eclipse. Good. Then they can go home and stare at the sun. That'll be way better. Honestly, wow. I'm glad. They're just trying to shift liability away. They're just trying to shift liability. All that these kids are going to show up and they're all going to be like blinking like, eh. like they got hit with a flash grenade. It's going to be great. <laughs> no, it, you would think by now the human race would be used to eclipses. We wouldn't mm -hmm. get all superstitious about it. This is nothing more than a modern superstition. This is just like the, you know, uh, Aboriginal people cowering in fear when the, when the sun gets dark periodically and, you know, praying for it to come back and then thinking they brought it back. This I, is, I this, don't know if this it's is akin to that. If it's that much of a superstition, because, I mean, yeah. firebenders lose their power during a full eclipse. <laughs> That's a good point. Well, it is a unique experience. I mean, all, yeah. all kidding yeah, aside. Yeah. But, I mean, when I was a kid, they just said, don't look at it. You'll hurt your. You'll 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 you'll. You'll burn I, your at, eyes at out. At worst, go blind. Yeah. At, at best, you'll you'll just you know lose a lot a ton of vision. And I was like, okay, got it. And me being one. That out is of a like, risk I am willing to take. But, exactly, <laughs> but like one out of every like two and a half million kids are dumb enough that they will look at a solar eclipse. Oh, I love. Oh well, that I'm sorry it, it happened to be your kid, but you know. We need to weed out the gene pool somehow. Back to the drawing they, board. You know, have another kid. Like, Maybe really they won't be that dumb. We're not getting the full eclipse like Texas is. Down no. Here, but like um, up here, the Walmart is giving out uh, so, uh, eclipse glasses. As they free, should. Like, That's exactly what they should be doing. Like they have a full like just it's it's at the front door of the Walmart. It's just a full display. And if you want to grab. However you want to grab, don't have to pay for them. You can grab some and leave. That's really cool. Yeah, because I agree with you, Harry. That's like not, this should I'm, be. I'm like, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, like, hang on. Okay. 
Well, I think Skip oh. had to step, yeah, away. Yeah, we'll just, step away. We'll just keep it, muddling through. It should be through. like a societal like event, you know. Uh, yeah, make sure people have glasses. Get to experience this once in in what every forty some odd years. Like the well, one to the level that's that. happening in Texas. Yeah. Well, it depends on where you are. I mean, eclipses are not that uncommon. Uh, if you're willing to go to them, then that's oh, an but experience. But when you can get a yeah, yeah, yeah. But when for all those kids a... that are that are basically in the path of totality, to to lock them up in the school would actually be worse. Yeah, just let them stay home, and then they can go outside and actually enjoy this. And yeah. if the Walmarts down in Texas are doing what the Walmarts up here are doing, like they'll get solar eclipse glasses for free. So, like, let them go. Like, let them and they'll probably it. learn a thing of, or two because people will talk to them about it. Otherwise, you're just going to get people who are bitter, who are like Carrie, who are bitter about it. Like, still bitter. Number of decades still later. Yeah. bitter. Not bitter. Yeah. Still bitter. <laughs> the bitterness is fresh every day. It was science yeah. camp for God's sakes. Yeah. Yeah. But you must love science. Man was scarred. <laughs> God. So many times I get screwed by these people who talk about science and all they want to do is look at like newts and things. Mm -hmm. That's not uh, science. That's I love your ability science. to hold on to that rage. Uh, well, the one I'm it. still mad about is the one where I couldn't, where they said I could go stand in the back of the room where Carl Sagan was talking. <laughs> and yeah. um, no, fuck you people. God, anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, hold on to so that you know rage. what's better? Hold on to that rage. So you know what's better? I'm, I'm still angry. I'm still angry. Yeah. <laughs> what's better than an eclipse? What? Anybody what? want to guess what's better than an eclipse in terms sex. of something really in space? Sex. Ice cream. Oh. A nova. Oh, flash <laughs> sale. Yeah. Wow. Are we finally going to get one of these? Oh, wait, uh, this is white, this, this is not what I want. Sorry, that's something. the wrong one. F screw that article. I don't care about Mom. you. There we go. This <laughs> article. Is, Move is over one... solar eclipse. Scientists predict a once in a lifetime nova explosion yeah. coming in the next several yeah. months. Yeah. As long as it doesn't this will hit be, us. This, you'll actually, you'll really be oh, able shit. to see this. this yes. This, this, will, this will be quite substantial. Now, it's not uh, a supernova. Exactly. It's a nova. nova. And, and just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. It's like a Chevy Nova. Yeah. Eh. Except a, or Bossa Nova. Yeah, more reliable. <laughs> now, don't get me started with Bossa ah. Nova. That's, you're just tempting fate when you even throw that out there, functional. Um, so, like, can anybody see that? Like, this is not like the solar... Oh, this will be naked eye visible. Yeah. Yeah. So... This is so exciting. Like, on our side of the world, though, because I bet you, no, it'll fucking rain that day. It'll be like <laughs> super dark clouds. We never see anything on the Pacific Northwest. This won't be a one-day event. Bullshit. This oh, will not. Goodness. This this will last a little longer than that. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. If it's three months. It'll be three months of clouds and rain. That, that'll be when the 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 typhoon will come through for Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then and then on the very last day, it will clear up. It'll be the most beautiful day in the world, and. Nothing's gone. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you watch you go. Bloop. Happened more than once in here. Well, it's not a supernova, which is where uh, a star basically collapses in on itself mm. as it runs out of fuel and then explodes. That's that's like an amazing event. But it's still um, when you have a binary star system, a bunch of fuel can sort of find its way onto one that's sort of placid, and then it sort of reaches a flashpoint. I'm using the very big paintbrush here, and creates this huge uh, burst of energy, not anywhere on par with a supernova, but still thousands of times more brightness than it would normally. Um, and so up in the sky, there should be this potentially really fantastic show. It's 8,000 light years away. But to my mind, this is a a lot more interesting than an eclipse. I mean, mm. the moon goes mm -hmm. in front of shit all the time. It's not really, yes. it's well, not really exactly. that interesting to me. But this is actually oh, pretty really? fascinating. Really? What? You're still bitter about what happened when you were a kid? And the eclipses aren't. That hey, they didn't keep me from watching a Nova. So, yeah. <laughs> you would have gone freaking Michael Myers on them if they stopped you from seeing. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Well, basically, this is there's a handful of these things that happen uh, cyclically with some amount of regularity and this particular one they've observed has a roughly 80 year cycle to it and there's only like six of them i believe on record that we know of that cycle like this um six of them uh do this this has an 80 year cycle and they find that there's a dimming that takes place sort of as the crap starts accumulating on the surface of this but wow. for um it suddenly bursts and spews out all this energy out so i think this is cool I mean, <clears throat> I've never seen a Nova. Uh, eclipses seem to happen all the time. This is one of those things where you have two two stars in close approximation to one 
another, and one of them is just eating up uh, the matter from the other, and essentially spinning out in a, what amounts to an accretion disk. Mm-hmm. And then it gets low enough on the matter. It, 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 well, there's a giant with a with a white dwarf that's basically um, orbiting yeah. it, and the white dwarf is right. just siphoning off resources. That's and what, then I'm talking about, what yeah. they're expecting is that suddenly, for a brief amount of time, the white dwarf will be giving off way more energy than the uh, the right. giant next to it. Right. Yeah. That's I'm the, sure there's that's a metaphor here, but I don't even want to think about what it is. <laughs> All right, let's see. So that's space. We're good with space. That's good enough. Click those things off on the spreadsheet. Space um, is still the final frontier. So why don't we talk about that thing that Functional wanted to talk about before we go too much further along. You wanted to talk about something right. involving like some kind of nerd thing. What was it? Star, oh, so Star Trek things. or Star Wars or... Aliens. There, there were so many things Excellent. that were... Yeah, there were so many things that were released, uh, both trailer-wise and, um, like, released-released. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, deliciousness in the new Star Wars show, The Acolyte. Um, I checked just before the show. It's It's got a higher dislike ratio than Harvey Weinstein's uh, victims. Um, it's almost at a half a million downvotes. It's got... 8.7 million views. And Is this the trailer? Yeah, yeah, the trailer. Okay. 173 upvotes. So it's 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 really not. Much and what is okay. the what is the name of this? The Acolyte. The Acolyte. The, okay, but the why why are people downvoting it? I thought the trailer was neat. Because it looks like crap. How did it? Well, look here's like the crap? trailer. Close your eyes. Oh, look at the monkey. <laughs> Sorry, I like the monkey. Your eyes. Can deceive you. It's all girls. Shut up. And Bullcat was that like for you. Bullcat Angel. Oh. Tell me. Okay, yeah. I don't think it looks that That's bad. Right. I disagree with you, functional. This looks yeah, it fun. But look tell us what you mean by looks, right? I mean, I know yeah. that it's been downvoted into oblivion. I don't have the plug-in, so I can't tell how many, mm. but isn't the ratio like twenty to one on the downvotes? It's 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 uh, it's almost at a half million. Okay. It's like 470 something thousand. Well, that's actually not too bad. That's two and a half times well, the damage. Um, it also has episodes. to deal with like obviously there's there's influence from the press releases and the the idiots who make this crap uh opening their mouths and and I mean it's Look, if I don't have a problem with female heroes, female Jedi, whatever. One of my favorite uh, 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 leading uh, uh, action stars is Sigourney Weaver, okay? But the fact that you you can look at this movie and point out that there's, I think there's one dude in, like, the entire movie that isn't, you know, like some... Everybody's black, everybody's female, everybody's Asian. Like, it, 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 it I screams... I think that's okay. It, no, yeah. but it's not, because it's not... They, they want representation, they want diversity, but what they're giving you is the complete opposite of diversity. They're giving you the, the this is, it's only BIPOC. That's not diversity. Diversity would be what we've had since the 80s and 90s of filmmaking in the early 2000s. Okay, of there's, I there's, understand, there's, there's representation but of a lot of different people and a lot, and not just- This is not earth functional. This is not Earth functional, and I understand your frustration, and and I can see it, because for all we know, there could have been a better Caucasian actor, and they decided that oh, because we have a, a ratio, we have to not, not cast them. However, this is not Earth and history. This is not, no, it's not. set on what? Earth. It's not. But this is this is one of the few places where I will suspend my rolling my eyes at DEI because it is. Yeah. Uh, set in a galaxy space full of all sorts of people of different race colors of facial features etc right they're not necessarily human they can be every color under the rainbow including earth skin tones so i think that's a little bit mean and, and just just it, that's not a good now if it turns out that the whole time in the in those two uh episodes they talk about like the force is female 
bullshit like that. That is annoying. I agree. And well, they don't and and doesn't make any sense. And okay, then the writing is bad and they're pandering. But just when, the casting alone and how it looks, I don't think that's sufficient for the downvote. But when they yeah. No, it's 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 not, but it does play a role. No okay. The downvotes, I will agree with you entirely, aren't based on what's presented here, the trailer. But when the showrunners and the the director and writer, whatever, um, came out and said, the reason why we have a mostly female and BIPOC cast is to piss off white men. That's they, where the problem comes mission in. Accomplished. And that's, and yeah, that's yeah, why done. the downvotes are at almost a half a million now. Nice, nice. So, they, by the way, by the way, I just wanted to tell you that the likes on this are 173K. The dislikes are 450 Okay, so it's but, three to one dislikes to like. Um, but the that's a, that's the Star issue. Wars, it, uh, act like, uh, uh, but here trailer. here's the problem. Okay, they said they wanted to piss off men. Way to go! You pissed them off. They got pissed off instead of ignoring it. Once yeah. again, this is entertainment. If you want it to go away, you have to ignore it. I agree with you. The problem is, is that everyone gets a bug up their ass and then proceeds to go, I have to stand on my soapbox and talk shit because God forbid. And then you all, and then everything just ends up going in a circle and a circle and a circle. And then everybody bitches and bones. And then everybody's like, well, I'm going to make my own thing. And then it's just as much shit as the other stuff that's made. It's just as bad. And that's the problem. This is, this is exactly like Trump. You want it to go away? Y'all should have fucking ignored it. The yeah. thing has 8.7 million mother effing views. Do you understand how much AdSense they got from that? I don't give a damn if, oh. two, one, if nine tenths of them had ad blocker. That's still plenty of to get ad stuff off of it. You are the issue is is that instead of just watching stuff and paying for stuff that you actually want to watch and giving money to the ones that you actually want to see and the good stories you want to see, everybody watches the stuff they shouldn't. They hate watch or they pirate it, which still gives them traffic, which still gets them views, which still gives them the ability to take it to their to the stockholders. You need to effing ignore it. If you're going to get this pissed off about it, then just block it. Yeah, I have I'm a couple tired of thoughts. Of, it's just I get tired of hearing bitching from both sides. It makes me. Let's hear both well, of okay. them, Harry. So. Two thoughts. First of all, it might still suck. <laughs> okay, so oh, absolutely. They're yeah. still yeah. still holding out yeah, for that. I, I mean, we, we're we're gonna we're gonna see because we'll judge it until I we'll, watch we'll, it. we'll we'll see wh whether it sucks or not. Um, there are many people who seem to think that it might, but who knows? But the other thing is, I differentiate. Okay, as I as you're talking, I was thinking about it. It's like why do certain things bug me and certain things not bug me? Right. So I'm trying to figure out what's going on in my mind. My to my mind, if you take an existing thing, C.S. Lewis, Tolkien. Something James Bond even, right? And yeah. and you've got an established property where the sort of identity of the characters are significant in some way. I can I think you're allowed to get pissed off. I was annoyed when um <clears throat> Brie Larson was making comments about uh, uh, a wrinkle in time, saying, Well, this movie isn't for you. No, wait a second. I loved that book when I was growing up. Yeah. So go oh, fuck yourself. No, they destroyed it. Yeah. yeah so especially. if you're gonna take yeah. something yeah. that you're that I'm emotionally invested in, anymore. and then you're going to take a giant dump on it. That's one thing. Yeah. But this is a whole new thing, right? And it's and it's kind of separate and ignorable. I mean, in your own mind, you could just decide, eh, this sucks. I'm not, I'm just going to consider this not to be canon, <laughs> okay? Much yeah. like I do, much like I do, I preserve the memory of Tom Baker in my mind, and I completely ignore. I don't even know the name of the person who's the current doctor now i just and ignore doctor who right i just don't care about any of that stuff right so i think it makes a big difference if they want to create some new thing and then have it suck and then lose a bunch of money uh catering to whatever ideology they have if that's what they're actually doing more power to you you know just like accelerate it, your way into the into the void the thing is it's like and it's okay getting mad about it i don't fault people for getting if like you don't like where star trek went you don't like where star wars went that's fine. You need to stop hate watching it. You need to stop giving it the time of day. Well, you need to go. You need to treat it like a toxic relationship. You need to go. You know what? You're toxic. I can't deal with you anymore because you're just making me upset. Well, so there's, I'm going to cut away from it. There's a uh, an adaptation of the book uh, for uh, it's the Zelazny thing, uh, the Chronicles of Amber, which mm -hmm. Stephen Colbert's company is associated with. So I'm already afraid that they're going to take. Um, 
one of my favorite things and destroy it. Uh, I'm going to be so pissed off that it's not going to yeah. be like, oh, well, if they make it, if they make it suck, I should just look the other way. I'm not going to look the other way. <laughs> okay. well, I'm going to complain. Somebody taken, <laughs> has somebody taken Zelazny and, and butchered? Well, I haven't done it yet. Rod? There's a thing that's coming out and who knows what's going to happen. Okay. Uh, Zelazny is the guy that a lot of the people who people like now point to as their inspiration. Well, yeah. Yeah. So I love well, Roger Zelazny. I, I do too. Massively and, and underrated. I, yes. And I, and I absolutely yes. get that. And it's like you have, like I said, you have the right to be upset. But like I said, there's a certain point where you need to accept the fact that it's like a toxic relationship. Like getting upset at an entertainment company that's going to do it anyway isn't going to change anything. Screaming at the sun doesn't make it not rise. Like, that's the thing. The only way these companies will stop doing it is if they actually start to lose money hand over fist, not just a little bit. The thing is, is once again, like Star Wars, it's like there'll be the people who hate watch it, Mm -hmm. who will then put videos on there, who will then make videos about it, who will then cause a part of their audience will not do it the illegal way um, or the pirate way. And we'll do it through the actual means because they actually have a Disney Plus thing, which means there'll be people who hate watch it, so this way they can bitch about it. So then mm-hmm. the company still gets money. It's a, it's that's the thing. And don't, like, and don't forget the grievance like grifting causes yeah. the 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 um, keywords to yep. trend. Um, yep. When stuff is incessantly talked about on YouTube, that translates to X. That translates yep. to Facebook. It's all interconnected that's a good in that point. way. That's a really and good point. that more than anything, when Disney says. Holy shit. Our trailer has almost 9 million views, everybody. That entire boardroom is clapping themselves on the back and going, yep. we did it. We fucking did it. Because that shattered records. Just the view yep. count alone. They don't give a shit what the ratio is. Yep. And I totally agree with you on that. The reason why, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an entertainment junkie. I'm a cinephile. I watch everything. Good, bad, yeah. the ugly. And I reserve judgment, like, the, the, the revitalized X-Men 97 segueing into that, it wasn't as bad as pe- the, the, the doomsayers were saying. It was, wasn't was great, but it wasn't this woke uh, disaster fest that, again, because the showrunners and people involved in the, in the, in the production of this, this, this revitalization of the show um, and it's had only the first foot two and episodes. mouth disease... It didn't. There was nothing about what they were talking about in the show. The show was actually kind of watchable. It wasn't great. There was still, but you know, if I look back at what the original cartoon was, it, it was cheesy. It's and, not. It's like, not exactly it like. A we're not talking theater. Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah, we're not talking masterpiece theater as far as writing goes. Uh-huh. I mean, would I recommend it to someone? Maybe if they were a fan of the original show or really diehard like me, fan of the X Men who's been collecting the comic books. Uh, all yeah. the way back from the beginning to when. You know, so what's this new movie. animated thing called X Men seventy seven? Get funky. 97. I don't know. It's, it's X Men okay. ninety seven. It basically just picks off. But where do they get funky? Where the the show it, left off. Also, and it, it's also the only. It's only the first two episodes. Like a lot yeah. of shows aren't good. The first two episodes. Well, I mean that's that's what I'm saying. Like it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't bad. It wasn't a nearly. You can still bad watch as the rest like, of it. Do, you know. Oh, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. No, it was. It was all right. One thing that was immensely disappointing, and I'm sorry, Serenity, I'm sorry, Sora, because I know the three of us love this game. They just came out with Ark the Animated Series from Paramount Mm -hmm. Plus. It was an original. It is absolute abject dog shit. Like, this is DEI smattered and smeared with feces all over it. It is so goddamn awful. And again... Like I said, was reserving judgment till I actually saw it because I think we watched the trailer a while ago. God, the trailer was forever ago. Yeah, yeah, it was forever ago. And you know, reserve judgment. We we all would talked about it briefly, and we're like, yeah, we'll wait, we'll see it. Um, and I I couldn't get through episode four because it was just that bad. The beginning of the show, it's got a star-studded cast of like, oh yeah, um, Carl um, Urban's Bob, um, um, a- a- Alan Tudyk. Uh, Michelle Yeoh, oh, nice. Russell Crowe, Carl David Urban, Tennant. Monica Bellucci, Gerard Carl Butler, Urban's David Tennant, yep. Vin Diesel, Malcolm McDowell. He's good. Uh, I mean, it's just... I like him. Ooh, 
And the, the reason I bring, bring it up, because there's something that I, I caught, uh, because I did a group watch with some friends with this, um, that I caught that I thought was high fucking hilarious. So the main character, obviously, is a POC uh, 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 <laughs> female lesbian. Um, whose which mother, ironically, in the, in the trailer, the original trailer, she was white, which makes it really funny. No, she's an abo now. She's an aboriginal. Oh, I, I know, but that's what I'm saying. Anyway, you switched but, 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 but you, what did you call her? An ab, an abo? Yeah, it's, abo it's, aborigine? it's said. Is that, yeah. is that a racial? It is a racial, it is a racial slur. Oh, you made a racism. A a <laughs> it's is. only, <laughs> it's only a category three racism. Okay. It's like, it's like oh, yeah. if you use the, the C word in, in, uh, Australia, it's just Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Here, it doesn't go over quite so well. Talk to English people about pants, and they get very <laughs> flustered. Yeah, or okay, fannies. okay, okay. Or but fannies. The, the, the fannies, yes. Part Fanny pack. That I picked up on. That's the main character, the one that's being carried, because of course she is. Um, <coughs> it's total girl piss, girl boss, can do anything and everything. Super smart, super capable, whatever. Anyway, moving on. Um, her mother was voiced by Ellen Page. Page. Ellen. Elliot. Oh, Elliot. Sorry, Page. Elliot Page. Yes, because the 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 best person. To do the voice for a female character is, of course, somebody who is female. First, you use the A word, and then you dead named somebody. You're really yeah, on a roll, man. I don't even yeah. know you. Who are you? <laughs> what, I don't how'd know you get on you. this show? How'd you get on this show? Get out. <laughs> and, however, to top it off with something that was truly incredible, truly amazing, that they dropped the teaser for was Alien Romulus, and that one looks I. Great. My jaw dropped. That the really the cool. trailer just on the trailer itself <laughs> oh, no. nice. revitalizes that that sense of of, of mm -hmm. claustrophobia and intenseness that the original Alien had, oh. while having what looks like there's going to be this action aspect to it because and this is this is so incredible that. Um, both Ridley Scott and James Cameron yep. were working with Fede Alvarez, the, the director mm -hmm. for Romulus, to bridge, the, bridge the, the movie together with the other ones because this takes place dead in the middle between Alien and Aliens. Yep. And it's got oh, some okay. pretty interesting newer writers. Uh, Dan O'Bannon, who, um, who did the original Alien and Aliens, mm -hmm. uh, Return of the Living Dead, but he yep. worked with uh, Roto Sayagwiz, oh, who did yeah. Don't Breathe, and the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which Don't Breathe it was really, really gave you that, that uneasy sense when you're watching yeah. this movie. Not the greatest movie in the world, but he did convey that claustrophobic, that, that feeling I got personally when I watched the original Alien, and to a, a lesser extent, Aliens. Um, it really captured that, and Tex the, the the new Texas Ch Chainsaw yeah. Massacre movie I thought was amazing. I thought it was of all the horror remakes the best because it it just gave a big middle finger to sort of modern day culture. Like he does, Leatherface doesn't care. You know, someone's oh you're gonna be you're gonna go viral, dude, and he just cuts him in half with a chainsaw. Oh, gorgeous. Well, that so sounds I think, something to look forward to. I think it's to. got a team behind it. I think that the, the trailer Eddie, really, Eddie revi really Eddie. inspired me to be like, hey, there's still maybe some hope for stuff coming out. Um, Skep and I, I'm almost done. Uh, Skep, and I, Skep and I uh, talked just before this on how even Alien Cube uh, kind of has a little bit of charm. We both really liked Alien Resurrection yeah. as just yes. sort of a cheesy popcorn um, action. It's great fun. Prometheus made fun, me want to punch know? people in the dick. Yeah, same. Which one? <laughs> Prometheus. Oh, Prometheus. That, that Prometheus. was like, I was like, honest, I don't care if you people die. You are all so freaking stupid. Every, every, I just want yeah. everybody on the screen to just die. That's what I which want. Which one is, which one is, because I don't remember the two prequel ones. The Prometheus, shitty one with Charlize Theron. With Rapaz, or with the girl from, uh, from the hair. Charlize. Oh, um. Is oh, Prometheus the first one? Because they're both it's a prequel of, of, of sorts. Yes. Yeah. And it's well, they're terrible. both prequels. The, the two newish ones, like before, like no. The, but Prometheus is the first one in 2012. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's the one. Okay. 
you, you mean you don't appreciate the scientists taking off their helmets and putting their face right into the alien plant of a, uh, and, and saying, oh, the let me The unknown let me alien kiss object? This. Yeah, that's how science yeah, is done. Let me yeah. kiss this and touch it because I'm a professional. <laughs> See, but the thing is, the thing is, as, as an alien movie, it really did not work. The people were kind of dumb, but the, the, the paintbrush in which this film was crafted on the technical side of things was just like, Mwah. gorgeous. Like, it was so gorgeous. It was so gorgeous, so well constructed. You're so, you are the blending of practical right. effects with the CGI. The problem was the script was just ugh. lame. Even even the even the, the the actors they got Idris Elba and 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 Nomi Rapace and 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 what's his name Guy Pierce are really great, mm-hmm. but they had such shit to work with, such shit. And so um, just to close off, so Romulus was going to be Hulu only. Unfortunately, they're going to put it in theaters. Theater going is, is oh, it's, has it's been... not a series. No, no it's, it's, it's a, a full movie. movie. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Catch your popcorn. Uh, Don't use the Dune popcorn cup, Paramount really didn't like Mm -hmm. where the whole mythos went with the Prometheus and and the Predator thing. So what they're trying to do is is, it's not like... I like Alien versus Predator movies, though. They were really cheesy, though. They were really bad. I don't care. I like them. I like them, too. I I love the first one. The first one was excellent. I really liked it. (laughs) I I want to join up with a predator and get face scarring and be there like, yeah, I got adopted because I'm cool. (laughs) Girl power. That is a girl power movie. (laughs) Okay? (laughs) But uh, what I wanted to say was um, what they're doing, instead of doing, you know, like reboots or, or... reimaginings or any of these buzzwords that they want to try to throw out um they're sort of just going back to the original sort of formulas of some of these these franchises and working doing the right thing it seems it seems who knows romulus could be complete crap um we shall see, we shall see. but it seems like there is a small shift in in st- projects like this where they want to go back to the source of what made it popular and, and work as, from there. As long as someone keeps Ridley Scott on a leash. Well, he, he, he was both. just, they, they were both just um, 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 conferring with the director. They weren't like directly, directly involved. I, I'm, but, I'm aware, but I'm, I'm saying, but yeah, like yeah, yeah. he, he, he also had kind of the same standing on Prometheus too. So it's, it's one of those things where it's like to go, Oh, that's lovely, Ridley. Pat his hand and go go over there and co- go color. <laughs> go color, please. We're gonna we're gonna be over, we're gonna be over here. Um, I like I like the fact that it looks like because my favorite way space is done is in two movie franchises. Is in the Which Aliens one? franchise and the way it and what I mean by space, I mean like the spaceships and like how things are made. Right. Is the Aliens movies and the Chronicles of Riddick's movies. Because oh yeah, they yeah. do I, I, really well on Rick. fine movies. I, I I I love the fact that it's tactile. There's buttons. There's that kind of stuff. Like you have stuff that actually looks like you could get hit with a wrench and actually survive. Um, yeah. I love Mass Effect. Mass Effect. It's all holographic screens. All you need is one someone to sneeze the wrong way and everything goes away. And that just, <laughs> that just You're makes not wrong. me that makes me paranoid because I'm I'm just techy enough to be like I get. I understand that C, like is, the CRT TVs are are not the best, but they're a little bit safer than all of the little like pixels and stuff like mm. that. Like, how about we have something that could actually look like it could like I don't know take a gravitational jump. And that rem- <laughs> that reminds me mm-hmm. actually, Serenity, that for this movie they got the original special effects crew, the you practical can tell. effects crew from Aliens. So yeah. you can you really know, tell by I looking mean, at this. I mean, it's, it's so. giving me a little bit of hope again. Preserving judgment, but eh, yeah, you know, which it's just it's, it's that nice thing of, to like, it's nice to see things that might. Every, uh, which like um in Alien Isolation too, like I like the fact in the Riddick movies and the Alien movies, the the first ones, um that like you can see where people like when they were walking down the hallway and they put their hand on the wall when they were going around a corner and you could see the wear lines. I like the fact that nothing's clean, nothing's perfectly clean because human beings are not perfectly clean. So you don't um, like the Orville. The Orville doesn't bother me because I, I respect Orville for what it is. Yeah. But actual Star Trek. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's one of those things where it's kind of like I, I liked the fact that aliens 
and Riddick both kind of showed the, I don't want to say middle class, but kind of the middle of the road people. Mm -hmm. They weren't the well, super duper rich people, but they weren't the super dirt poor ones either. They were the ones who were kind of like, no. kind of like Serenity, kind of like um, Serenity, aka Firefly. Like that was the same kind of How, vibe it, where well, like, it felt in, like in black, but like in pitch black, like the original movie of the Riddick movies, the, it, mm -hmm. it even starts with saying that they're taking a backwater, quote unquote, flight path. Yeah. So it's even less of a middle class. This is like, this is the, you want to be hidden. You're forgotten. Yep. You don't have the money to traverse. You're, uh, uh, in fact, they're set, a couple of the characters are the settlers, right? Like they're yeah. the farmers, dust farmer type people, right? So you're like looking for a place to settle down. Like these are more realistic people that you would see versus like everybody is uh, a gen uh, like a, I don't know, diplomat or something, yeah. you know? So well, I understand see, it, it's really, it's, it's, a, it's a more realistic, realistic uh, kind well, of like, Even the take. opening of Pitch Black, when the pilot was like, oh no, fuck it, we're killing these people. Like, yeah. <laughs> who was like, like <laughs> we're, he, we're like, dropping. He, <laughs> yeah. He's like, we're, we're, fuck it, no, I want to just keep myself alive. Like, that's how pe some people would be. And there's nothing wrong with that because I can't say that I wouldn't do the same thing in the same situation. It's just like, that that's I like that realism of accepting the fact that even good people do bad shit. And with the case of Riddick was like even bad people will do good shit sometimes. Like that was what Riddick was. Riddick was one of the first he wasn't the first anti hero, but of the modern anti heroes, he was one of the better salmations of it. Yeah, yeah, he was to be fair, he was good from the beginning and they made him bad because we and whistle something. A, a true. Um, I'm deep in the lore of. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I, I read the I read the books too. No, trust me, I read the I read the novelization of the movies. Trust me, I. Um, but it's it is that thing of like he still you read has Riddick. Him. You read the novelization of Riddick. Oh, oh they're always good. Read yeah, they're really good. Oh, but they're Thanks. good though. They're, no, that they're really there. good novelizations. Yeah. Oh, I, if if it's a movie I love, I I will hunt the novelizations of the films down. Mm. <laughs> I read them every time. I love them. Teacup. I'm just thinking about how weird I am. I'm trying to think of the, in terms of movies, the novelizations I've read, I read the novelization of the first Star Trek, the motion picture and mm -hmm. 26 pages in, I knew what the ending was going to be. It was not a right. great story idea. And it's I have like, a book, I've... I have a book with four uh, of like the screenplays for Woody Allen movies that I read when I was a kid too. I was oh. very strange. <laughs> If we if we were to go down the novelization path, I've read the novelizations for all of the original Star Wars movies. I have read. Wow, the that's, that's I have. Right, yeah, I don't like, think oh, I hold hold on to your butt, honey. Here yeah. we go. I've read the novelization for all the, the for the modern Star Trek movies. I've read the novelizations for all those. I've read for all the Riddick movies. I've read it for the Alien movies because there are novelizations out for that. Nice. I have. <laughs> I feel like you're doing it backwards, though. I read the book and then sometimes go see the movie. Nope. I don't see the movie nope. and then, that's then what, go that's read the what book. I, do. I read the oh, I read No, the no, book no. You see the movie it. and you read the novelization because of the movie. that fills in the gap. Yeah, I, well, because it wasn't the book. I read The Witcher yeah. before I saw the. the well, The Witcher yeah, yeah, came Witcher out before the book. Yeah. It also matters on which. That's probably why. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm talking about like I go see the movie because I do this if I go, especially if I go see it in the theater, because the one there's a mall in the vicinity of me that actually still gets foot traffic and there's a movie theater in it and there's a bookstore in it. I will literally nice. watch the movie and then go to the bookstore, find the novelization. I OK, let me let me go full geek here. I one being into Five Nights at Freddy because I am that person. I have also read all the Five Nights at Freddy's books. Mm -hmm. And I saw the movie hmm. and I'm going to watch the movie again because it's on Prime now. But that's another thing entirely. But there are oh. so many books on Five Nights at Freddy's. But anyway, but it's like that's the stuff I do because I to me, it's especially if I really like the movie because I don't do it with movies I hate. It gives more yeah. it gives more insight into the characters, like especially with Riddick. It gives so like the, the all three of the Chronicles of Riddick's novelization books gives so much insight into that man and it's amazing it's awesome and i recommend it highly well to, to quote myself anything worth doing is worth overdoing this is usually yeah, what right. i tell to somebody when they're telling me to cut it out but um uh we i'll be damned if i'm going to make this thumbnail again like the one that i made for the show without actually covering the topic that's in the thumbnail oh here we go because no oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Stupid thing. Well, luckily that doesn't show up in the stream, so we're good. Uh, well, that didn't work. <laughs> no, that doesn't get picked up by the uh, by the virtual camera, so I didn't just dox myself. Okay, yeah, no, I just watched. It. Okay, good. Okay. Good. Yes. Well, there's nothing bad. I mean, there's nothing. It's, it's not oh, like know. you know. It's no, not like no problem. It's nothing terrible. It's, it's, it's still oh, yeah. don't particularly yes, want to show are, that yes. that window. Okay, so yeah, let's the novelizations of Alien and Aliens are really so, good. Uh, the yes, thing that are. I mentioned in the thumbnail was, uh, can't we just sort of have movies that are cool again? And when I mean cool, I don't mean good. I don't mean <laughs> enjoyable. I don't mean full of action. I don't mean a lot of things. I mean cool, like old school cool, like actually cool okay and one of the coolest movies in my opinion is the movie bullet with steve oh, mcqueen okay yeah. i think this movie is incredibly cool and i'm going to come at it from a slightly different direction than maybe people are used to um i'm going to show a little bit of the opening and i'm going to rather than interrupt the opening i'm going to just mute it in spaces and kind of turn the sound down a little bit so we don't get copy struck so i'm going to try to walk the fine line as best as possible here so let me just turn the sound down a little bit. So Lalo Schifrin did the uh, soundtrack. So this is the opening of the movie. We immediately sort of start setting the stage and going into action. But it's very sparse, you know, like we're setting the stage. There's not any, no dialogue. I'm going to be quiet for a bit. This is cool. Oh yeah, get it. Cool. Yeah, so we're setting, I'm just gonna dim that a little bit. So we're setting the scene. Essentially there's a, like a mob witness, okay? And these guys are trying to capture this guy before he turns. And so he's hiding inside this building. They're all outside there. Nobody, is saying a goddamn thing. I feel like I should be saying Yeah. I mean, it's a lost art of filmmaking that you don't need every scene to be filled with exposition to get your story across sometimes. Yeah, you can just correct. show a freaking story. And the music just builds and builds and builds. Okay, and then we get to, we're going to come up on a point here where I'm going to turn it down for a bit, where they're going to essentially break the window and action's going to start. Mm. Yep. But you notice we're still one minute and 42 seconds into this. And nobody said a goddamn thing. And it's basically just been set, uh, uh, world building, like setting. Building. Yeah. That's oh, all it is, and then the thing. action. I love the fact they still have their hats on. That's the thing that's funny. They are gentlemen. They wear the hats. They wear the hats. They're crooks of honor is what they are. Yo yo. So he's gonna, you know, head down to the garage. It's all very quiet. <laughs> no words. <laughs> it's all facial expressions. It's just the opening credits, too. But st shit's happening. It's not pointless. Yeah, 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 the the no, story no, is moving. Saying, like, it's already a work, a masterpiece, and it's just the opening credits. Is the car going to explode? No. Is the bomb in there? No. No, 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 no. no. Not that kind of movie, Sora. Oh. Well, it is, but it is. It's cool. <laughs> Now words will start in a moment. Yep. Let's just make a note of how long it took. Oh, start your talkies. This is basic. Three minutes and five seconds. That is <laughs> Not a single damn word was spoken. That is a cool movie. That is a cool, cool movie. I love this movie so much. Everybody talks about the car chase, which you know we'll talk about a little bit later. Which is legit to talk which about. Which is absolutely legit to talk about. so but, long. But to my mind... Okay, I just want to I want to illustrate the point again. It's, you know, most of communication is nonverbal, right? In real life. But in a lot of modern movies, it's just like so much talking. 
just all the yeah. time. All that pointless exposition and talking about feelings and satisfying whichever Bechtel test. It's like, you know, well, you're not talking. You could be talking about the environment or women. You, you could, you know, whatever, right? Let me just show you another another scene. This is back in the day when you didn't have computers and they're, they're all standing around waiting to see what the picture of this guy on a record on the other side of the country looks like using a telecopier. Oh, God, telecopier. Jesus. <laughs> There's Robert Vaughn. I mean, to the right there. Bad <laughs> guy. Mm. <laughs> Even when he was so I young, he looked so old. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. I Roper. Love the added stuff. Yeah. 30 seconds. This is where the fog of God, war is Dan interesting. Harry, why did you download hentai again? <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll never know what the perf looks like. Yeah. Just there. <laughs> this is just building acting. tension. This is just tension and acting. And you, you already know what each of the characters are sort of thinking, feeling, where they're fitting in this hierarchy, just from their actions. You know big big boss man here, he's the chief. You know he's the man in charge. You know Bullet and the, the Henry, whatever, uh, you know they're his subordinate. You like you know that there's this thick anticipation of what's gonna come from the, the, the telecopier. Like it's it's so well put together. It's Love so it. damn well put together. This is how this is a, a beautiful piece of filmmaking. And because you don't have cell phones and instantaneous information, you can actually make the story have suspense points that yes. it doesn't have now. That so no longer has. Right? Yeah. So that's why a period piece, in some ways, is almost more interesting because you can. <laughs> The story isn't hampered by the fact that you've got near perfect real time information everywhere. Um, I I don't know, but that's that's just sort of a side point. I just like the fact that uh, there's a there's a gritty realism to this, you know, because if you're if you really were in a state of anticipation, you wouldn't be talking. You would you would be quiet. And I, I love the realism of this movie. That car scene, they actually blocked off sixty square blocks of San Francisco. To do the to do the car chase, they shot the hospital scenes inside an actual hospital. Mm -hmm. They used actual nurses to play the nurses in the hospital. That's the, the kind of level oh, of detail. What and was that? Nineteen sixty-eight, seventy. Okay, Boy, right, 70. Robert. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I thought it was in the sixties. I, th I thought. Oh, sorry, I sorry. It was it was sixty eight. I apologize. Um, well, the car was, was a 68. still in high school. Yeah. The car was okay. a sixty eight. The movie was in seventy. Oh, the movie was so. Bullet wow, was made in nineteen seventy. Wow, that's when I graduated. Okay, and I mean that isn't to say I don't like movies that are well crafted that have a lot of dialogue. Sometimes movies are like that. Think of first person comes to mind who's like uh, controversial, but really good at his his use of dialogue in movies is Tarantino. You know, so each it's just different. It's just different. Yeah, Jack Nicholson. She but felt funny. Of, <laughs> she but felt a funny. lot of a lot of <laughs> modern stuff is just exposition and blah 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 for the sake of blah 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 because they don't have the creative. Um, aptitude and they don't want to put in the work like you said um they actually filmed on the street as opposed to in front of a green screen green screen takes like there is work to create on the on the cg end but there's no work there it's just like hey we're gonna act in a big empty space of nothing and they'll fill it in later like that's uh, this oh, takes work we got a, a clarification like bullet came out Go. in 68 so it's the same year as the car um I want to oh, show. I want to show you. I want to show you one, right. one more scene, nice. where uh, where it's where it's atmospheric and there's no talking, just to kind of <laughs> drill this point into the ground. But I love this scene, um, and then we'll you talk about. And then we'll talk about the car scene. Okay. I mean, there aren't very many movies that I would just say. You know, if you haven't seen it, you should just go out and see it. This is one of them. Well, it's one. Okay. If this is the kind of movie that you would like, you definitely want to see it.
Now, if you've never been in a busy restaurant in San Francisco with a beautiful woman, you won't understand this scene. <laughs> This is where you try to keep your elbows in and not knock people's shit over. Get your toll going. I love... It's only the music you hear. Yeah. There's no other noise. It's fantastic. Right. And you're essentially, like, looking in on this exchange that's happening, this social exchange, right? And there's there's the interaction with them, and then, of course, his looking at her, and her looking at him. Oh. Yeah. Now, this is a great scene. I like when they do that in movies a lot. Yeah. Is the look. Well, less is more. That in real life. It's like reading a book. You're filling it in with your own experience, your own perception. It, it makes it um, more like you're experiencing it than it's being sort of unfolded for you. So that real, just like authentic. Steve McQueen uh, allow you to have a, a broad canvas to paint your prejudices on. Let's just leave so it on that, that, that still. <laughs> I mean, Steve McQueen could just glance at somebody and just convey so much meaning. So the, facial expression. The picture that was in the uh, the thumbnail for the show, um, which I apparently can't show you, um, was them uh, riding around on a motorcycle like while they were filming. That was just like, oh, I'm just hanging out with 23-year-old Jacqueline Bissett in San Francisco, and we'll just do this while we're waiting for the next scene to be shot, because I can because I'm Steve McQueen. Back when Jacqueline Bissett was hot. That's a long time ago. I don't know. I, I still think, I think she's actually aged pretty well. I don't have a problem with Jacqueline Bissett at any age. Well, I mean, any age oh, when she's old me, enough, me, obviously. Me either. I'm, oh. I, I, was, I wasn't meaning to call Dreams her a has-been. I'm just saying that was a long, well, she that didn't, was a oh. long time ago. What? Stream suspended for get... policy violation. Oh, did we get killed? Whoopsies. Oh, well. Yeah. It's okay. Well, it should be back shortly. Or did it, or did yeah, it completely I get know. forked? No, it said suspended, so it's probably... Oh, okay. Cool. Oopsie. All right. Well, we'll, well just... let's see. We might come back because uh, bon, uh, Johnny Bonsanko, this, he plays music all the time. and, and Yeah, they and they just... It. Like I yeah. said, it says suspended, so it doesn't say it's killed. It's still going. People are still in chat. We're fine. They just can't. I hear wonder what. I wonder this. what it. Uh, eh, it could have been the music. Could have been. Could have been anything. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> no wonder if it was something got said in chat. Chat. No, it's uh, it's no, probably because it, the movie scenes. It's the copyright. Yeah, it's probably copyright. Whatever. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it's an it it's an automated system. <laughs> yeah. Thank God. Looking out for our best interests. Did any of you watch the trailer I linked in Discord, the Monkey Man so, trailer? So, can someone tell me, are we still streaming or what's going on? No, yeah, we are live. not. We are we, we are not. We are we are live to Streamyards. We are not going to YouTube right now. Okay, no, so it, should I restart the stream? Live on YouTube, yeah, if you, but it's the stream unavailable. Okay, I guess yeah. we should restart. Yes, the the menus of the Zoo stream is finished. Oh, okay. So should I create another one, or are we just done for tonight? What do you think? Should it come back? Oh, what? We've only I thought it should come stream. back. Cause... Oh, it says your stream is no longer minute. being blocked due to copyright issues. So are we going? Uh, oh, it's going to take oh, yeah, Now we're back. We're back. Yeah. Bye, everybody. That was yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, there I, we are. I've there never we are. experienced that before, where I the just... stream just gets sort of paused, and we go off and yeah, have like no, a little it, fugue moment. About two seconds after functional. Well, if I knew what it was we did wrong, it would be really much easier to um, avoid it. <laughs> Big brother. It's it's going watching. to be it, it'll be the the fact that we you uh, played so much of the movie. I think. Yeah, I, I think just, you're right, Sora. Oh well. Because it's only. We meant well. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay. so I guess we can't do it, anything except for talk caution. about it, right? <laughs> yeah. 
maybe we can make we can make uh, we can paint, paint uh, words pictures process. with our words. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I think I can do this though. Um, so did you guys hear that somebody actually located one of the cars from, uh, well, basically one of the cars that they used to make the movie bullet. Yeah. It's the 68 Mustang GT. They put this mm. thing up for auction, uh, at, uh, Meacham's, I think it was. And mm. you ended up with this. Three million five. Three, four. One last time. If you want it, you want to get three million five hundred thousand on a bit. Three, five, you've been a player. Thank you. <laughs> Three, three, four, three, three million four hundred thousand. It sold for three million four hundred thousand dollars for a '68 Mustang. Nice. Wow. I mean, it's uh, not it, the only thing. Okay, the okay. only thing that makes this car special is the fact that it was in the movie. Yes. Okay. That's the only thing. That's the only thing. But it took well, something Steve that would be. Steve McQueen touched that car. Okay. He did. Yeah. Oh, that's he, what... he got very personal with this car. Yeah. Me come auctions. Me come auctions. That's what it's called. Yes. Me come. M e c u m. And no, no uh, humor to be found there. Uh, 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 nope. Uh, uh, nope. Watch me come out. Simi me me twenty twenty. But yeah, just the fact that that car was in the movie um, yeah. was enough to take it from a you know a few tens of thousands of dollars to this. Wow. Now, apparently, McQueen tried to actually buy the car back from the people who purchased it after the movie ended. And they said, no, nah, no, nah, we kind of like this car. We're going to keep it. And it spent about 40 years in a barn. And uh, mm. they ultimately uh, put it on the market and uh, were able to get the $3.4 million for it. It's an insane amount of money for a Mustang, a 68 Mustang. <laughs> but, you know, it's got that uh, it's got that special juju to it because it's... Uh, well, you know. it's memorabilia. It's you know, it's got some sort of intrinsic. It's it's worth whatever Rick Harrison value. thinks it's worth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I if I had that money, I I wouldn't buy that car, but I would probably spend an exorbitant amount of money on a really nice car. Mm. Probably a, a Shelby, what, like seventy two Shelby or something. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Well. We have other stuff we can talk about, even though we can't talk about that movie image anymore. But anyway, I love that movie. If you haven't seen it, go out and watch it. It's really good. Um, if this was a film class, we could probably have a discussion. Because the, the obvious comparison between Steve McQueen is, well, you basically compare him to Paul Newman, right? right. And then you can say, well, what's the difference right. between these two? And if you wanted to compare movies, what would be fun would be comparing uh, Paris Blues with Paul Newman and Sidney Poitier um, and that musical scene to the Lalo Schifrin driven San Francisco cop movie Bullet. Because I think that's actually a fair comparison. If I watch Paris Blues, which obviously I'm not going to be showing, um, I feel like I'm watching things happen on a movie set. That, mm -hmm. that movie, as good as it is, doesn't have the feeling to it that uh, Bullet Not does. Yeah. You know? and, and also the thing about the chase scene in Bullet, when you see them going through the streets of San Francisco in these cars, the cars aren't doing anything superhuman. They're doing things that you or I on a good day could do in a car, traveling at velocities that are completely reasonable and things bottom out and hubcaps fly off. All that kind of stuff yes. happens, right? Yes. It, it feels like a real car chase. If I look at something that happens in uh, the Italian job, the remake, for instance, and you see those minis cruising around, <laughs> Uh, in Venice, there's no way in hell that 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 in real life you could drive like that. But if I see the bullet thing, it's like, oh, somebody's following me. I'm going to circle back around and then follow them. And so then the 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 pursuer becomes the pursuee, and then they go on this you know 13 minute drive through San Francisco at right. at speeds that are just barely possible with the stock suspensions of the cars they were driving. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know how it's going to end. You know, I mean, I know how it's going to end, but I still think this is an amazing movie. It's a great piece of filmmaking. Um, but they they can't make cool movies anymore because I think there are just too many things on the checklist to 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 let them make it be cool. Yeah, you know, there's just there's they they think they're going to get more audience if they just put more and more and more in it, and that's totally not the way to do it. Sometimes the negative space is just as important as everything else. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'm not an art person. 
Um, the things left unsaid can be just as important as the things that are. Yeah, like. Yeah. 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 No, that's that's totally uh, I, something. I love that Pink about. Floyd song, "Things Left Unsaid." Yeah. Mm. Yep, that's a good one. Anyway, so what do we want to do? Let's uh, let's make fun of people. How about that? Um, yeah, let's do yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, time honored. On <laughs> it'll make us. It'll, okay. it'll make us seem better than we are. Complaint alleges University of Wisconsin DEI czar, husband of Harvard's DEI chief, has decades-long history of research misconduct. Him. <laughs> yeah. Another one. I know. Hey. How is My how is it possible? Shot. You know, <laughs> this really isn't his fault. It's our fault for introducing the Eurocentric Western view of Publisher Parish. That's right. You know, why can't he just exist in his magnificence without having to publish anything? Well, we we pressured him into into uh, reusing his material. That's so excellent. they they basically show here's something he wrote in the Journal of Diversity in Higher Education and then the Journal of Progressive Policy and Practice. He really did not add much original content, but pushed it off as if it was an original paper. Oopsie. Areas marked in red are uh, largely the same. Yeah. Yeah. You'd think a, a university professor would know about the tools for finding plagiarism. Just saying. It's it's not I mean, that hard to not using... plagiarize. It's not that no, hard. But like, like turnitin.com has been used since I was in high school to make sure that kids don't uh, don't plagiarize. Mm -hmm. like it literally just upload your document on there and it will do this analyze it and then it'll give you a percentage that may be cop uh, may be taken from somewhere else and the tools have got only gotten better since and it's like yeah and that was mid-aughts right yep so this is so stupid yeah, it's it's not particularly good, but it's just it's a bad look for these DEI people when they get caught uh, trying to shortcut the system all the time. I'm sure most of them are hardworking well, and produce and producing things of benefit to society. Stop that's demanding that are, people have merit, Harry. Yeah, these, you bigot. Are, these are physicists and doctors and and so forth. These these are not people who are weak at what they do and have to be considered just on the basis of their race. These are legitimate superstars here. So um, here's, a, here's a great example of some terrible, terrible journalism. So this looks like an article in Smithsonian Magazine, but what they really did is they pulled some content that was covered by Creative Commons from another publication and presented it as if it was sort of like a first class article. This is really just warmed over leftovers from another publication that Smithsonian put out. But leaving that aside, how medieval women express their forbidden emotions. Upper class women use letters and embroidery to reflect on their inner lives. Um I'm already struggling with uh, with the premise of this sort of thing. This is a perfect example of how you can just sort of take a thesis and if uh you're not very critical, you can just run with it. I yeah. I think this is um, this is really, really not not good. In the medieval period, prescriptive literature warned women of the dangers of anger, one of the seven deadly sins. Women's anger was believed to confirm their inherent weakness and inability to control their emotions. I, I don't know. I've, I've met women, known them for a while. I don't see how you can actually, you can temper your anger, but you can't make it go away. This is like a, a weird assumption. I don't think in medieval times, women were running around not being angry. And so they had Having to start making... Helps. Yeah, and then they just had to start, you know, making quilts and stencils and embroidery. It's like... As you do. Yeah, this just strikes me as being an absolutely terrible um, <laughs> premise. Oh, what? Yeah. Most embroidery yeah. patterns were written by men, and in rejecting these patterns and sentiments, women exerted power and emotional authority while treading the line between masculine authoritativeness and female passivity. Jesus, Smithsonian, you used to actually be a real magazine. I know. I used to love that magazine. Yeah. I used to look forward to getting it, you know? Just yeah. So many things. It's just been trashed by modernity. 
While these letters and embroidered messages often fascin offer fascinating insights into the emotions of medieval women, most of them are for women of high social standing who had wealth and privilege. Women from lower classes generally weren't educated, so they couldn't make use of these forms, and the archives have gaps. What was perceived to be of value has not been saved for posterity, while that which we hold cultural currency uh, was not. Okay, so I didn't say that very well, it's but anyway, it's crap. It's crap. Yeah. <laughs> It's all crap. In my, it's a, as I discuss in my 2022 book, Hysterical, Exploding the Myth of Gendered Emotions. God. Okay, I can't read any more of this. This is terrible. Smithsonian should be ashamed of themselves. It to sounds like a... Say what now? Sorry? Oh, Functional. <laughs> I think in medieval times, they weren't scared to call women hysterical. So. Well, oh, they weren't, and it got a lot of women killed. <laughs> Yeah, they got I, yeah, I know. As I was, I was be, be, making <laughs> yeah. a joke. It was actually very. It actually um, was bad back then, unlike now. Yeah, where very people try to act like it. Very. Uh, uh, oh, I. What I'm still... looking for. Yeah, there used to be denigrating. We know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not. Yeah. We're, we're still... not claiming they didn't exist. That's why oh, they call yeah, it yeah, the yeah. medieval period. You know? Yeah. Well, they can't call it the Dark Ages anymore because they basically refuted themselves that it wasn't really the Dark Ages. It's a whole thing. Um, it was bright and sunny and, you know, less CO2 in the air. Like the Orville. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it, it, they only yeah. used uh, electric vehicles back then. See what happens when they introduce fossil fuels? Okay, so let's make oh, let's make fun point. of uh, let's make fun of these Norwegian women. I, I find this to be really cringy, and I'm probably just a bad person for hating I, this. You no, know, no, what Norwegians, this means. Oh, of wait. Course oh sorry. Uh, oh, I like these two. They're not that bad. Leave them alone. <laughs> no. Norwegians, <laughs> of course, cute. our baby gets vaccinated. I, We're Norwegians, of course. We get an hour of work every day to breastfeed, and yes, it's paid. We're Norwegians, of course. We can paid by who? <laughs> Yeah, themselves. The society. Yeah. That's their do, social net. Do you not know where the money comes from? Do you not know? Jesus. Well, it's it's yeah, not about I mean, where it's... the money is. The fact that it's a small country and this is yes. a it's it is a social net that they have decided and they and it's passed through their government. People have voted for their politicians. It's gone through. Period. It's not going to work in places like the states, probably, or Canada, or anything with. Or places where you have to get population. shit done. Yeah. Yeah. But it's yeah. different. They're they're in a frozen yeah. hellscape for a majority yeah, of the like, years. So the, 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 it's like, a very I, there's small, very small population. cringe about this. This yeah. is adorable. So there what language is like, this video in? English. English. Who's it being targeted at? Oh, we oh, like yeah. No, Us. Everybody else. From, no, 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 I, it's not. I it's not just them. It's not just them being Norwegian and doing the Norwegian thing and Older leaving me alone. Are. They're busy, basically trying to say preaching. we're awesome and you suck because you know you don't get an of hour course. off uh, free to to do the thing. Well, I mean, but that's what every country does. Americans Americans do it. Canadians do it. French do it. Everybody does that. I just think it's preachy and cringe. That's oh, what I think. Absolutely, this is. is a trend, though. Yeah, this, that's we the are trend. No, it's not the the what they're doing is that we're no we just they have we're we're twins of a uh, uh, thing of it. Of course, it's, we is, do. This is yeah. a trick. TikTok trend. It's they are just inserting their thing is Norwegians. Oh, good. I can I can blame TikTok. Trend. Okay. So this yeah, is it's, just yeah, a trend. It's, it's not them. Thing. They didn't make this up. They're just adding to the trend. Yeah. It's it's the entire trend is being insufferable. Oh, okay. That's the entire it's, trend. <laughs> well, so, some like, that's make it more funny. Like there's there's these these uh, trio. I think one is from Australia. They're they're Asians, mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. like, we're Asians, of course. And they're trying to be fun. It, 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 they basically end up being extremely racist, and it's hilarious because they're making fun of it. And then other people are more insufferable, and it's yeah, just like, it's just the trend. It's fine. And the thing is, some of these are paid for by the um, tourism boards to make mm -hmm. people move there because people like it when it's Americans propaganda. move to other countries because they can get more. <laughs> money out of what they tax them for no i legitimately don't care i just find it to be very oh, weirdly no. preachy but the fact that it started oh, yeah. as a tiktok thing tells me where this this cringe germinated and then sprung forward i will take it as a given that these are nice ladies and i shouldn't dislike them but i still find well, this particular okay, video they cringy. have a little bit of wokeness to them yeah I can't they do everything they do yeah. but i i think they're fun they're they're okay they have their moments okay and at 1.83 million subscribers, I mean, they're making money. They have yeah. way more subscribers than we've got. So we're not punching down everybody. Okay. Yeah, we'll they're married, down. by yeah, the way. Oh, okay. Uh, they're married. To each other? And yes. Yes. 
I wonder where they got the baby juice. Other, and that that is their their son is uh, is juice. their baby that they obviously mm. got sperm donor for. Yes, yeah. you baby. Um, so Serenity, is your uh, washing machine connected to the internet? No. <laughs> Wouldn't you like it to be connected to the internet? No. <laughs> okay. Your washing machine could be sending 3.7 gigabytes of data a day. <laughs> LG washing machine owner disconnected his device from Wi-Fi after noticing excessive outgoing daily data. Now, Good. for a Tom's Hardware article, this is actually pretty shit. It talks about how much data was sent, and he disconnected it, but he never actually figured out where the data was going. <laughs> Oh, that was stupid. It's like washing machine was watching cat videos in Norwegian videos. Why? No, 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 Norwegian it wasn't. Forest no, cat no, it wasn't. It wasn't downloading a bunch of data. It was uploading a bunch of data. Like how much water he uses? How does it have, a, for, does it have uh, a, a way of listening to people? To, <laughs> One TCP packet for what per water molecule? What? No, that's just this is an insane amount of data. Three point eight gigabytes of data mining crypto a day. That is actually one of the yeah. things that, that they theorized exactly is that I've... somebody could have actually that been doing right. something like that. Hmm. That's what I was thinking. But actually, mining crypto, well, actually, in a distributed watching. network, it could. But you'd be seeing uh, more equal amounts of up, up and down. I think in that sort of thing where you had a distributed crypto application yeah, you would. rather yeah. than just being a bunch of Even upload. Yeah. So yeah, 3.6 uh, gigabytes of data a day. I wish that this person knew a little more tech stuff and could have given us more information. But if yeah. you have it, if you have a washing machine that's hooked up from LG, that's hooked up to the net and you find that your uh, internet's a little on the slow side, feeling a little lethargic, maybe go into your router and figure out, if your okay. washing machine is doing something it shouldn't be doing or when any other appliances my my household is speed queen and maytag that's what my household is oh i knew none i liked you for a reason i actually only, them, i have maytag speed none of them McQueen? connect to the internet <laughs> speed McQueen. McQueen. Oh, McQueen. A lot you're gonna get of, us a blocked of again are just red badges they're, they're actually the same uh, Speed Queen is not just badged. It's actually made no, in the U.S. Not. and it's got heavier yeah, springs really and suspension good. and the whole well, deal. I'm an old Speed. I'm an old Speed Queen guy. I mean, yeah. I've LG now, but they're I, still I, really good. Like I, that's the I used to have one. Speed Speed Queen simply because they were simpler than the other mm -hmm. one. Didn't have all the electronics. Had a mechanical actuator. The Speed Queen did, and it just lasted long. Mine's still mechanical. The, the yeah. really cool thing. Yeah. Is that Speed Queen now makes a stacked one? That's really simple too, because one of my friends just bought one of their stacked ones, and they're like almost a solid unit, so they're not mm -hmm. like two parts, and they're really they're it's it's still just as good. Uh, well, while we're on the topic, uh, truck to truck worm could infect and disrupt entire U.S. commercial fleet. Um, oh yay! In a paper presented at the Hot 2024 lizards? Network <laughs> and Distributed uh -huh. Systems Security Symposium, uh, Associated Professor Don't Care and Engineer Thank Don't Care uh, demonstrated how ELDs can be accessed over Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connections to take control of a truck, manipulate data, and spread malware between vehicles. So not right. only are these systems hackable but they could literally infect each other when they're within range. And you could great. theoretically have a virus infect all of the big trucks in America. Uh, theoretically. Oh It'll well, never happen. Just sleep peacefully, people. This is fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's Nothing face facts. All they have to do is attach it to a porn video and it's done. Or cat video. Yeah. Oh, the Nyan. Yeah. yeah, it's, only, or it's like it's that's all they have to do. Like it takes nothing. Like these these people will not will not be careful about their internet connection. <laughs> they use truck stop internet for God's sakes. They're not going to be careful about their internet connection. Well, here here's here's some of the details in our evaluation of ELDs. Oh, by the way, ELD is electronic logging device. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Procured from various resellers, we discovered that they are distributed with factory default firmware settings that present yep. considerable security risks, the authors noted. This includes an exposed API that permits over-the-air updates. The devices also have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled by default with a predictable Bluetooth identifier and Wi-Fi service set ID, SSID, and weak default password. <laughs> what's, 
what's the worst that can happen, Skip? Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, password. <laughs> once. Just password, just one, two, three, four. Yeah. Open says me. Well, password. All yeah. right. Well, anyway, uh, you know, I put be... fives in for the word password for the S's. Yeah. Be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> um, let's see. We've just rolled out all these these tools without the proper education to the layman, and it's it's so dangerous. Functional. That's so sweet of you to think people, even if they were educated, would still pay fuck attention. That's adorable. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, no, no. <coughs> oh, you Excuse killed me. him. I'm not Sorry, refusing Randy. to read um, chat. I'm just not reading it because no, I'm no, struggling with other things. He's talking about, talking about monkey. ranting monkey. He's talking about ranting, ranting monkey. monkey. It's not oh, you. Okay. It's not you. I said reject modernity, <laughs> return to monkey. And he was like, ah, yeah, yes. Oh, monkey. Um, but no serenity because look at the, the people on the panel. You know, the, there's varying degrees of, of, of understanding of these systems. However, we all at least have the basic wherewithal to know that these tools need to be protected and you can't just willy-nilly, oh, look, I got an email. My grandma left me money. Oh, my God, my this Nigerian prince needs a Just a loan. change the default password, like people. Yeah, it's, oh it's not that At hard a bare to minimum, just, a, just change the default few, password. To take a few steps to secure your shit. Oh, yeah. I agree. But I, I stand with what Harry and Skep have said more than once, including you, Functional. People mm. are stupid. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, yeah. actually, even smart people are stupid sometimes. Even oh yeah, smart. absolutely. It takes absolutely. really smart people, people to make really things. big mistakes. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that, yeah. and that's the thing is like, it doesn't mean that you should leave the door open, but at the same time is like, there's a reason why I, I, I don't have OCD, but I am a little OCD about some things and the fact that I know one day I'm going to forget to lock the front door. Mind you, I live out in the middle of nowhere, and we have the right to bear arms here. So I'm not that worried, but I check the doors at night because I have an older invalid, uh, not completely invalid, but an older mother who can't walk very well. I check all the doors at least two or three times a night because I know I will be stupid one night and forget. <laughs> yeah. You know, if, if you fed the coyotes, do you think they would just uh, walk the perimeter for you? And defend that things. That would be lovely, <laughs> but that's not how that works. Maybe if you make no. friends you with them. them like you do in Ark. Yeah, I know. No. Oh, God. Why do you think I like playing Ark? Because I can tame the wild things and make them work for me. Okay, it's new Serenity. It's actually kind of scary but funny. Um, just the other day, uh, Elwyn didn't lock the front door to our unit and went out and did some errands. And randomly, some stranger just walked into my apartment and was like, "Oh, what the hell? I'm sorry." They well, they they. They meant to be on the top floor, not me on the second top floor. Um, and the elevator, for some reason, stopped on my floor. Whatever. It happens yeah. with the elevator sometimes. It, it'll oh, yeah. Stop. And you're not paying attention. I've done it myself. You know, same. it stops on the fifth floor and I get out and I'm like, oh, shit, this isn't my apartment. You know, trying to fiddle with my key. Why isn't my key fitting? Looking at the door going, oh, it's 5 oh, whatever. Oh, okay. I'm just oh, going to sleep back into place. the bushes now. <laughs> so it's just, it, 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 it's, it's weird. But, like, I live in such a <coughs> city that um, things haven't gone entirely to shit now. So that kind of stuff doesn't really terrify me. I'd rather yeah. it didn't happen, but it's not yeah. exactly malicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Where I could see, you know, if I, 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 I've i lived in New York, I've lived in Chica Chirac, uh, I've lived in, uh, you know, a, a couple other uh, 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 big uh, 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 Pittsburgh, etc. I always oh, made God, sure the Pittsburgh, door was Jesus, the, the door was locked, <laughs> dead bolted, and the chain was up. Like, there's no way I'm taking a chance. Anybody's gonna Pitt even, you know, Pittsburgh. The jackals would have been eating your body by the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's move on to the next thing because we're kind of running late on time here. Um, so, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you a little video here. Okay. Uh -oh. I'll kill the sound so we don't want to get in trouble. You can just turn the sound oh. down. Look at this. Wait. Somebody wait actually it. built this this sort of model airport thing, right? I'm going to show you this and then one other thing. And it just sort of goes oh, on no. a loop. Oh, no. It just crashes. Oh, okay. ah, we're all oh, no, wait. That's really it's cool. That's really cool. Wait. I, what? It didn't fail then. Where's the failure? Well, it was basically uh, the the landing failed. It didn't land. It just took off again. Yeah, oh. that's what they mean. They just oh. failed. And the then there's and then there's this this thing right here. It's a uh, 
is it an O scale or an N scale? Anyway, it's a small train that this person has put together. And you have all this detail, and this is pretty cool. But where are we going with this, Harry? You're probably asking. What's the difference between N and O scale? Serenity. Size. What is the, oh. what's, what's the difference between N and O scale? Oh, and God. O scale? You're asking me a question I can't remember the name of anymore. I used to know something about well, that. Well, it's about the size, but the question is... When you look at these videos, don't you automatically assume that the person who put this together is male? Every yes. single yes. time. Now, yes. I don't yes. know. I don't know of anything that's more strongly gender correlated <laughs> than building model railroads. <laughs> than, than like this weird model railroad model airport Just thing. Model everything. Mind, no doubt mind about you, it. Mind you, I was one of I was one of the few. God, I remember being in high school. It was a fucking nightmare. Um, <laughs> I was one of the few females who liked doing that stuff because I love trains. Trains are my... If I could have been an engineer, I would be an engineer. So you're a train yeah, the, enthusiast. The, the fact of the matter is, is still you're one in like two million. Oh, yeah. I know. Oh, it's, I'm it's, completely aware. It's, but it's like it's, so male-oriented. A lot of people reference directly to the notion that women are more uh, generally into people and, and, and men are more into things. And that's why mm -hmm. models tend to appeal... <laughs> To a male-centered brain, I mean, it's it's interesting stuff. I, 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 I oh yeah, up on it. but it it does feel like it's almost always like dudes that do this. This is even more like dude oriented than like amateur radio. I don't know if you've ever like stumbled across like an amateur radio group meeting thing, but it's almost oh, yeah. all old dudes, and mm -hmm. and that's pretty much it. In Southern, the, my cousin who lives in Southern California is into ham, is into old radios. Like that. It's all people who look like me. I yeah, but but then <laughs> you know this sort of stuff. It's just almost always dudes. I think this might just mm -hmm. be where we just need our sanctuary where nobody's going to mess with us. So we go find mm -hmm. something really boring to do. And it's like nobody wants to come talk to you when you're in your train thing because you're just going to start talking about trains. So they'll actually, leave you alone. Harry, it's all about the male gaze. It's all well, about the male okay, gaze. Okay, so there's two things to go. In scale models are half the size of. Okay, so well, let me do this. The scale sizes are Z and H O, which is just ho, and O. Yeah. I have N, H O. N is half of the H O scale models. Um, it's in America, I think it's like one to one hundred and sixtieth, I think. I think it's something like that. But yeah, so the O scale models are the largest. They're the big boys. That is that's that's kind of the ends about at one Z is the smallest. N is the one step above that. So that's, it. it's easier to do N scale and HO size models than it is to do O, because the O, you need like. A lot more space. God in heaven, do you. You need um, like, yeah, you need a lot more space. HO is pretty forgiving. Um, Z is usually done for most, like, if you go to like a museum that does dioramas, mm -hmm. Z and N are usually the scale because they're the easiest because you can do you can it the models are still the dioramas are still big but you can do more stuff because the trains aren't taking up the entire i didn't even know there was a z i knew there was an n oh z's z's tiny like it's little like it's it's like a hot wheel car like well, it's a tiny thing well, <laughs> while i've while i've got your attention what do you think about uh robots <laughs> Uh, a robots. male humanoid robot was Ugh. unveiled in Saudi Arabia and then inappropriately oh. touched a female reporter. <laughs> You're becoming sentient. <laughs> the accuracy is astounding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We yeah. all know what that he really so do. It appeared to inappropriately touch a female reporter during a presentation named Muhammad. It is Saudi Arabia's first humanoid male robot. Muhammad I was going to make you religious jokes, but is you know, I'm not, not during Ramadan. You're so. not. Um, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Gonna make is it fully joke. autonomous you, and did not deviate from his expected behavior. The makers said. Mm. Oh boy. So he was expected to grope. Uh, well, to at least to so. appear to grope. Oh yeah, Green Badger Ho is one eighty seventh. The grope on five thousand robot. Yeah. And and Richard and Richard Head, like I said in chat, like as someone who's into Warhammer, I am completely aware of the fact that war games are mostly men. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. With <laughs> my me. decades' experience with the game, I mean, it's gotten a you know. I would say, would have said before when I started, yeah, same kind of thing. One in every like two million would be a girl in the hobby. Today, it's you know one in a hundred thousand, which is great. Yep. You know, it's 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 still one of those one of those great hobbies 
that is being religiously gatekept from all the people who want to come in and change it. And um, we're, you know, the, the community as a whole has been so welcoming to the, to the, the women who do want to come in and yeah. want to be a part of the hobby, not want to come in and change the hobby. It's been a glorious thing to see. Well, why not change the hobby for the better? Well, well, the thing is, is like, and this is the issue that I always get really, really mad whenever anybody tries to say that, like, guys in gaming treat women badly. Mm. As Sora can no, we attest. Don't. <laughs> well, I'm getting there. As Sora can attest to, are there bad actors? Of course there are. But every yeah. single guy we've ever gamed with has been a chill dude. And like, even the amount of times problem. they walked us through when we were like, I don't know what the fuck. Geodes. Geodes but has like, a mod list for us to play a game and he built I know, himself. But, but, and then these are people we know, but I have been in, and mind you, these are these are like like in WoW or in Lotro. So like, okay, it's not exactly the shoot, it, shoot em up games, mm. but I've been in situations and stuff where be somebody would be like, oh, you're new. Let me just, you know, I need the points. Just follow behind me. And, and that's it. It'll be like a five minute in, in interaction. And it's not like, oh, my God, it's a girl. We have to, like, help the girl. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. like weird. But in like fact, that. in my like, experience, in the in the, the, the heavy PvP games, it's uh, girls te or females tend to get it a lot easier in the shit talking department oh yeah absolutely. then you know some of the shit that that us guys say to each other we would never dream in a million years to say to a female player because i mean i think it's just part of the hardwired coding of being a dude like being yeah, a, a, a respect like a, a, a normal dude you know because we understand hey I, again we still welcome them in to be a part of the games and, and and have fun and whatever but there is a certain we will shit talk to a certain point and yeah. the, the, the good ones, most of us, normal people, know that there's sort of like that invisible line, we don't cross with girls. Yeah. However, what? you know, some of the shit talking, again, like I said, between guys gets really fucking bad. Well, and, and the thing is to kind of it can. double double back a little bit. Yeah. I have never, as a female, being into trains, being into science fiction, being into all of the kind of war games and all this kind of stuff that I'm into the bad actor piece of crap man is rare and he usually gets jumped by the other dudes verbally before i can yeah, even say yeah. anything to him like that's the, the thing that makes and, and it's the thing of I like the it's the myth of the fact that the woman's going to be treated badly the myth that this is like yes it well, does happen i will never deny that but it's like you you all are i no offense many of the women who say that that happens I, I don't entirely believe you just for the sheer fact that I've heard, like the way you act is so smarmy and so condescending that You're bringing it. I was just about to say like fucking Anita Sarkeesian, the whole bully hunters <laughs> yeah. thing where, where they, they intentionally try to gaslight or, or start shit mm -hmm. or because they're just such degenerate human beings at their core that people just get one earful from them and they're just like, Fuck off. Yeah. I'm like, I've run into you. women. Just go away. I've run into women like that, and I'm just like, just shut up. Like, let the. Like, New Bully let Hunters the, Steel Series like, Special let the, Edition. Let the, like, I've, 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 I've been in Call of Duty back in the old days of Call of Duty. I've been mm. in Xbox, Oxbox, uh, Xbox Live Call of Duty waiting rooms. She I have heard duty. some heinous crap. I have heard some hate because I don't, because I will not talk. And the amount of times when I. Like after about five minutes of them just being the most heinous things to me to each other and me all of a sudden going, hi, guys. And they're all like, oh, shit. <laughs> and like listening to them have like heart. It's like you hands. just walked into the locker room, you know? <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, God. And all the hands cover their crotch. But it's just it's, that, <laughs> like, it's, it's just the whole fact of like I it, it, women are more accepted and stuff than a lot of these people like the bully hunters will ever acknowledge because they think because they're not liked that women are not liked. It's like, no, well, you're not liked. Second, you just happen to be female. Uh, <laughs> so we have to, we have to they wrap this up because I have Sorry, to let, I have to let problem. Skip get his uh, beauty sleep. <laughs> um, not, not to lay all this on Skip, but we have actually been going for two hours <laughs> and 20 minutes, uh, but I want to leave fine. us on a, uh, on a joke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. It's, it's that moment it like takes a second and you're like wait a minute what <laughs> all right, uh, all right. Good. good night everybody good night.